Hello? Hello? Everybody, happy Monday. You're very welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator stream. And tonight, friends, we start part three of our brand new IA4 ATC course. Tonight, we're going to focus on flying from Unicom into a controlled zone. You see, it's all bananas. Uh, I, I broke my mic arm <laughs> just before we went live. I broke it! Um, but let's not worry about that for the moment. All is well in the realm. You see, we've loads of stuff to learn and do and do you know what I mean? So, uh, well, what we're going to do tonight. Part three of our series delves in to effective communication uh, and the procedures while operating under the Unicom um, and then, well, operating under Unicom as we transition into some ATC coverage. We're on the ground here at Cork, Echo India, Charlie Kilo. Yeah, uh, and then we're heading up to Shannon, Echo India, November, November. There's no formal script when it comes to Unicom communications, but it is crucial to transmit your intentions clearly and understand what others are communicating. We're also going to review essential procedures, just like the SIDs and STARS, approaches, transitions, and missed approaches, along with a thorough revision of the instrument landing system, our ILS. Our journey begins on the ground at Cork, we have no coverage here from ATC, so we have to rely on Unicom. Then, as we ramble on through our flight, we'll pick up Shannon Tower and ground on approach. So, the course or the lessons tonight, well, I've broken it down into three different parts, right? So we've part one, which is going to be our flight planning. We're going to be checking out Simbrief. We're going to be having a look through Navigraph as well. We're going to plan our route from Cork up to Shannon. We assess the traffic, the weather, what active runways, and of course, any ATC stations that are online. Part two, we're going to fill and file our flight plan. To do this, we're going to be using Simbrief. Then, friends, we ramble over to the Two Tone Murphy website, and that's where we submit our flight plan. And I'll go through all of this once again from start to finish. Part three is going to be the flight. We focus on the practical flying, the navigation, and most importantly, the effective ATC communication. Starting from Cork, we're going to conduct our pre-flight inspections, our pushback, taxi departure, our en-route navigation. Then we worry about our approach strategies and conclude with hopefully a smooth landing once we arrive down to Shannon. Throughout the stages of flight, we're going to maintain a clear understanding of the ILS, which provides both lateral and vertical guidance for safe landing in low visibility conditions. The localizer, LOC, and the glide slope, GS, will they work together to guide the aircraft precisely to the runway, enhancing safety during approach and landings. This sounds pretty fancy. The newly updated Grand School Manual is now available on the website after four edits because I got them all wrong, but you'd be delighted to know they're now all up to date and should be running very well, right? We hope. So, um, tonight it's relatively straightforward. A lot of the procedures that we're doing thus far, well, they are straightforward. They're kind of the you know, the ideal conditions. Not too many conditional clearances, nothing weird happening. We're kind of aiming for the best possible scenario. However, tonight we will delve into, well, what do we do when things go wrong? There's going to be an emphasis on our spatial awareness, keeping our distance away from other aircraft, because when you're on Unicom, one of the issues that controllers may have is when pilots on VATSIM transition from Unicom, i.e. there's no ATC, and then they fly into a control zone, well, their separation is not fantastic. So the controller suddenly goes from, you know, on the DOS to being extremely busy because aircraft are coming in hot and fast. We have to watch that, especially when it comes to tonight, because when we're flying, that separation that we need from other aircraft, that's going to be vital for when we want to receive our landing clearance. We want to get a, a clear to land uh, almost on our first contact with ATC. That's where we have to rely heavily on the pilot. We need to know what's happening, where other aircraft are around us. And the only way we can really do that is by effective communication. Yes, we can use the avionics of the aircraft or ADSB. You can use some websites to monitor traffic around you. But most importantly, it's going to be our communication. So we'll go through all of this from start to finish tonight and uh, it'll be grand. It's totally fine, you know. So I'd like to welcome everyone in. We'll jump down through the chat here and say hello and good evening to everyone. Uh, you're very good for joining me. Welcome. And uh, well, I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. And we're doing well now. Lesson three already of our ATC course. You know, hello. Uh, do you know, so it's all very, very busy. So who's here now as we ramble in for a quick hello uh, to everyone? I'll find some buttons. It's over here. Ah, yes. Ah, 
Nothing like it on a Monday. So Englewood Online is here. It's good to see you. Super Typhon is in the chat. Black Eyes Gabe rambles in. Good to see you, Gabe. Super Typhon is in, along with Toto. Happy Monday to you, my dudes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the man, myth, and legend has rambled into the chat. His name is Jeppesen2001. Good to see you, man. Hope you're well. Uh, Spitfire RAF 100. Good to see you. Corn Wolf is here. Welcome aboard. Viper Strike rambles in. Great to see you, man. Sterling is in the house. Uh, let me see now. Jesus, Super Typhon is on a 10 stream in a row. Janie. Thank you very, very much indeed. So, um, right. Don't worry about... If you have any questions, I know there's a lot of people in the ATC lounge. I'm going to give you a full running demonstration of what's going to be involved tonight. And I'm going to fly this ahead of you guys. So just make sure that... I don't want to say pay attention, but just be sure you're watching what's going on and you're listening. And pretty much, as the fella said, if you kind of do it the way I do it, we'd be grand. That's the hope. That's the hope. Uh, but yes, so who else is here? Bell Bro, good to see you. Soaring AJ, you're very welcome aboard. Uh, Eamon, 1973, is ready for school. And yourself. Shovel Shoes shuffles in. AJH, John, hope you're well. Hermit Something is here. He says, looking forward to another valuable lesson. Welcome in. Echo Tango is in the house. Good to see it. Uh, Nighthawk, good afternoon. Hope all is well. Rambog is on a... Good, Rambog is on a 40 stream streak. 40! I need to get out more, he says. <laughs> 40 in a row. God almighty. Hemingbird bursts in the door and she says, I won a broom with a chunk of meat taped on top on the lottery. It was a sweepstake. Happy Monday, Hemingbird. You're very welcome in. Old Veteran 965. Good to see you, Scott. Happy Monday. Uh, Martel is here. Robbie 61 Tree Studio. Good evening. Hey, Robbie. Good to see you. Uh, Lucas. You're very welcome in. Happy one, uh, Monday. It's still Monday. Uh, Hemingbird is here. And, well, she's still here. She subscribed with tier two. Now, lads, I'm only saying, right, did you ever have a day? Did you ever have a Monday when you get out of the bed and everything starts going against you. I mean the weather, right? It's, it's lucky I, I wore, like, the right shoes. Do you know what I mean? I'm just having one of those days. So if you kind of sit there, you do this anyway. But if you're sitting there and, you you know, you think to yourself, this fella's a complete nut. It, it's grand. Tomorrow is but a new day and I shall be fine. Uh, but until then, we'll have to deal with the... Uh, right, do you know, Hemingbird, thank you very, very much indeed. Tier 2 for eight freaking months. You're very, very kind. Where did that time go? God almighty. Uh, right, we're over here now. Uh, cold feet, warm hands. Good to see you. Hope all as well. All the uh, all the stream streaks that you do. That's brilliant. <laughs> so we're having issues. Well, we're not having issues. The world is against us. I blame me. I'll explain everything now in a while. Muse fan bursts in the door. He says, how he is, his mad jokes is... Welcome aboard, Muse. Naughty Gnome is here, subscribing for 39 months, my dude. Thank you very, very much indeed. It's great to see you. Uh, now, let me see. Filthy. A new week meets a new opportunity. Indeed. Good to see you, man. Empire has rambled in with the raid. Empire kicking. Thank you very, very much indeed. I hope you guys had a wonderful stream and a happy Monday to you. Hope you're all keeping very well indeed. Uh, Razor Cab is here. It's good to see you. Sounds like a knockoff Take That song, says Muse. Did it? Do you think so? Onboard Simulations, happy Monday. Uh, Gunho Guy is in the house. Good morning. Hope you're well. Be the Janey Mac. Look, Empire has subscribed at Tier 1 for 21 months. Thank you very, very much indeed, Empire. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank you very much, Hello man. There. Hello there. There's all stuff happening. Uh, believe it or not, the de Havilland is looking at the possibility of restarting production of a modernized Sherpa Shorts cargo aircraft. What? Really? De Havilland, that's mad. Gibbo Ireland's in the chat. He says, don't worry, lads. I'm drinking Guinness tonight. Everything will be grand. <laughs> it will. It'll be totally fine. Gibbo, that's the spirit. Have you any for me? Uh, right, now, David Bay, good evening. Hope all is well. Big Carlo is in the house. Welcome aboard. Uh, now, clear to runway 24 via Cork Airport. Contact ground on Corum departure decimal ground. <laughs> totally fine, right? <sighs> It'll be grand, it'll be grand. Gassius Maximus, AJH, good to see you. Mag Sim TV, good evening. Zythe is in the house. Dougal McTavish, the German. Hello, Dougal, hope you're well. Uh, now, QC Frank says, Murph, uh, they should have called Unicorn. Unicorn. <laughs> monitor 122.8 or Monitor Unicorn. I'm pretty sure people do that. It's like when they say, see ya. See? Or it comes across as like, you know, 
It sounds as if someone's having a Huey and Ralph moment, right? But yes, things go wrong on a Murphy stream. Shocked I am. <laughs> Gabe, brilliant. Rely on the pilot. We are doomed. It'd be grand. Do you know, uh, Zybok Doc is here calling from Denmark. Hello from Tipperary. I hope you're keeping very well. Uh, now let me see. ATC, uh, Jesus, KWN. Hello, welcome in. Uh, now, we're catching up over here. Paparazzi's in the house. He says, uh, howdy, fireflies. Awaiting clearance to leave work. And I hope all is well. It's great to see you. Hello there. Uh, hello there. Just all things happening. Uh, I said unicorn during last week's lesson, did you? <laughs> Adam F06. Hello, Adam. You're very welcome in. SK Sun is in the house. Welcome in. Uh, ATC says, I, it, does a name behind that ATC KWN, is it like attack win? Attack win, perhaps? Uh, I was up in GG Machines today. Nice. Did you say hello to Rob? Lovely, lovely fella. Uh, now, let me see. It's all the stuff they have. Right. It's like Christmas Day in a toy shop. No, wait. Yeah. It's like waking up on Christmas Day in a toy shop. Oh, look at all this stuff. Uh, B. Carlo has subscribed 21 months in a row, with a total of 23 months uh, with a prime. B. Carlo, thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. Ah, oh, lads, it's brilliant. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Rogers RC 75 is in the chat. Welcome aboard, my dude. Uh, we're catching up here now. Looking forward to the chaos. Adam, there's going to be lots of it. Lots of it. Uh, Kean Lafford is in the house. He says, gee, which, uh, let me see, uh, Irish, oh wait, he said it in English as well, because I can't speak that much Irish. I know Clay and Jass. Uh, I have an Irish test tomorrow. It's a speaking test. I have to speak Irish. Just do an accent, Keen. They didn't say you actually have to speak, you know, right, just speak with an accent. Uh, I believe the medical term is brain fart. Yes, yes, yes. Suffers from that. I do. Uh, but yes, Captain Meowntine's good to see you. Now, let me see. David Bay has subscribed for 16 months, David Bay. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. The Bull Bandit is in the house. Welcome in. Uh, Topper Harley. Great name, Topper Harley. Or Topper Harley. Thank you very much indeed for the follow. Topper Harley. Wasn't that out of Hot Shots? Topper. Remember your one? What was your one's name? I saw her then another day in another movie. She was in, uh, she was in Hot Shots. We all remember Hot Shots. I mean, he basically fried an egg in her stomach. And then, you know, the olive incident. But that's not important. But anyway, didn't she only show up in... Um, there was a movie... About, wait till Gibbo hears this. There was a movie about Caesar. In fact, I think it was called Caesar. But anyway, I can't remember the cast. But your man out of Sex in the City was in it. Right? And so was um, Christopher Walken. And Christopher Walken played Cato, I think it was. You know, Rome. It, it didn't make sense at all. You know... This season. Brilliant. Christopher Walken back in ancient Rome. I mean, it made total sense. Total sense it made. Uh, but anyway, uh, where are we at? We're over here, look. Shirley Dev, good evening. Sounds more like a hiccup. Uh, do you only fly on Mondays? No, we fly Mondays and Fridays. And we cover the news on a Wednesday. Uh, si Murray's in the house. Good to see you, man. Uh, now, let me see. Uh... Janie Mac, a nerdy gamer. Hello from Phoenix, Arizona. Hello from Tipperary in Ireland. I hope you're well, man. Uh, Sun Jammer, you're very welcome in. Energizer is here. He says, evening all on a perfectly calm Monday. Yes, yes, yes. It's all grand here today. No mistakes. I don't... So I published my own missed approach, took four times, broke the website twice, and then just before I went live, I broke my arm, well, my microphone arm. You can't really hear the creakage because I have a fairly good noise gate. But let's let's not even let's not go there. Just don't touch it. I'll break it. Uh, but anyway, it's grand, right? Uh, grand Wazoo, welcome in. Uh, monitor Lonicom, right? I'll just start speaking Russian with an Irish accent. They'll probably get that. Give us give up. Wake up, Gibbo! <laughs> Jesus. Uh, right now, uh, Rock and Rimmer, good to see you. Seven months, man. Thank you very very much indeed, Rock. You're very welcome in. Uh, now, Tarnish, uh, Gibbo, come back. No, he, he'll come back. He'll come back. Uh, now, what's this now? We're making an executive call. Yes, yes, we are. It's uh, Yes, Gibbo. Yes. Right. Now, multitasking here, lads. You wouldn't believe it. I love... Wait, now. I love that you watch... Uh, uh, right. Who's your favourite hummingbird? What's your one's name? Uh, oh, Jesus. Oh, um, oh, she was in that movie, Mannequin. What's this her name is? Samantha. That's uh, brilliant. Right. And what was his name? Large or something. Oh, no, wait, no, big. His name is Big. Oh, Jesus. He shoes, big shoes. Uh, flying tonight, good to see you. No times uh, meant now to me. Uh, I'm going to YOLO it. We'll, we'll talk all about it. It'll be fine. Uh, Shirley Davis says, it's not the microphone arm that's creaking. <laughs> Jesus. It's grand. 
Uh, right now, Kim. That's the one. Yes, I think yes. She was in Star Trek as well. Was she? Was she in Star Trek? Jesus. Uh, right. So welcome in everyone, and uh, to our friends on YouTube. Who have we got? McShiggity Pilot is here. It's great to see you, man. McShiggity Pilot. I remember you from years ago uh, when we used to tune in and watch Cat Strader. Uh, I hope you're well, man. But yes, we can't see you. Uh, who else is here now? Uh, is it Jesus Primez? Welcome aboard. Uh, Lacqued, welcome aboard as well. You're looking well. El Papino is in the house. Hello from France. Hello from Tipperary. Hope you're well indeed. Uh, who else is here? It's just a busy night, isn't it? Uh, now, just buttons here. Look, Primo Victoria, welcome aboard. Uh, Motion Arts, you're welcome in. Want to ask you how you can make the Phoenix nose wheel work by the tiller. Uh, Lacqued, it's in the. Um, it should be in the settings in your EFB uh, it, it, for the Phoenix. Uh, you can activate the tiller in there as well, right? Shirley Dev is over there too. Hello over there, Shirley Dev. You're omnipresent. Wait, you're double present. Omnipresent? Ever present. You're, you're ever present, right? Uh, right now. So what I'm going to do next, lads, I'm going to do a very fancy transition. Uh, the height. The height. Call the big switch, good buddy. Got it, Splash. Thank you for the raid. Look, timing, right? Just as we... Uh, omnipotent, right? So glad you don't have thousands of followers. We'd never get that done, right? Now, there's the transition. You didn't even fit. Oh, Jesus. Hang on, lads. Oh, Jesus. That was loud, wasn't it? Right. So the plan here is don't break anything, Murphy. It'll be fine. Oh, Jesus. I'm in a hoop, but don't worry. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, you tried it. It's not working. Are you serious? Oh, Jesus. Uh, right. Scary flight. Yes, yes, yes. So we have a couple of stuff to get through this evening, folks, right? And there will be quite a bit of flying. Um, you know, we all have to do a thing, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to start off over on our website, twotonemurphy.com. And uh, once you get to the page here, you can marvel in the beautifulness of the layout and the, you know, Gibbo did this, he's a genius. Uh, but we're going to ramble over to where it says learn ATC. And we're going to click in on the IFR ATC series, right? Max Shiggity do I haven't seen him in ages. In ages and ages. Um, right, so on our page here, this is the IFR ATC series. And of course, it goes through a number of different things. Each of these thumbnails, well, it gives you a, a description of what they are. Introduction, course registration, the assignments page, flight planning, the ground school document, checklists are in there, notums, all the jazz. It's all there and it's all looking wonderful. So if we now go into notums, this is important. We need to check out our notums and each week do be sure to check out on the notums to see if there's anything updated or anything new. So tonight, for example, we have a custom missed approach procedure published in our notums. Notice to airmen or notice to on mission or whatever the Americans call it. Now they have changed it. But the effective date is from 19 Zulu or 1900 Zulu today uh, up until midnight, you know, Tomorrow. Well, tonight, right? Due to operational requirements and the fact that I'm an Egypt, um, a custom missed approach procedure is in effect for Shannon Runway 24 on the ILS approach during the specified dates. In the event of a missed approach, you will climb to altitude 4,000 feet, proceed runway heading direct to Asgon, then go to Gorto and finally Dirag, or Dirag to commence another approach. Pilots must monitor unicom frequency on 122.8 until re-establishing on the ILS approach for runway 24, after which they contact Shannon Tower on 118.7. Right? Uh, exercise caution and adhere to the specified procedures for safe operations. This is custom and it has to be based on just, I'll, I'll explain all now in a moment, right? So what do we mean by this? So we're going to bring up Navigraph, right? And Navigraph, by the way, is the absolute cat's pajamas, lads, when it comes to all of your navigational needs within a flight simulator. It is a paid subscription service, but I highly, highly recommend Navigraph. And today is the last day for any brand new subscriber to Navigraph with a new account. If you subscribe for a 12 month package, be it monthly or yearly, well, click on the link here on Twitch, or you can check it out in the NOTAMs, and Navigraph will give you one month for free, right? But anyway, we're going to have a quick look here. This is what our flight is going to look like tonight. Now, we'll go through all of this on Simbrief, so we'll plan the whole thing together. Adam Controls is here, watching this stream muted with subtitles, right? Janey, then, did you see the donkey talk to the two caterpillars about the talk with the other fella? How did that come up? All right? But anyway, 
what we're looking at here, and this is where it's going to get a little bit important. All right, this is where it gets important. So looking at our flight plan, and I'll go through the flight plan at the moment, but we're going to be using Shannon's runway 24 for our arrivals. Okay. Now, what happens if we miss the divil? Well, it is tis fairly simple now, right? Uh, if I go into airports and we look at Shannon, uh, open up Shannon here, and we look at the charts and we look at an approach for runway 24. The published missed approach. Every chart will have a published missed approach. This one here says climb ahead to November, November 012, climbing to 4,000 feet. Then they want you to turn right inbound to the VOR to initiate another approach or as directed. The reason why we're not doing the published approach tonight, we'll just think about it for the moment. Our aircraft, all of us, well, we're going to be rambling in here from where it has DRAG or DRAG, yeah? Oh, look at this phenomenal update from Navigraph. We're coming in this way, right? That's the direction we're coming in. So we're going to be flying this way, lads, yeah? Well, if you get, um, if you get, or if you follow the missed approach, it's going to take you this way and then back into the direction of oncoming traffic. We're not going to do that. So what we're doing tonight is very simple. We're going to go to ASCON, which is roughly here. Then we're going to fly all the way up it's off the chart to about there to Gorto uh, and then all the way back then to DRAG, roughly there. So I'm sending traffic well away, out of the way, if we need to do a missed approach. Now, you might ask, and we're going to cover missed approaches, but you might say to yourself, Murph, why would you give someone a missed approach? Or why would a pilot call missed approach? Right, here's one for you. So we spoke about it already. Aircraft separation, keeping aircraft, you know, decently spaced away from each other. It just means when aircraft start approaching, uh, you know, one of your fixed points, let's call it DRAG, well, you're going to be getting yourselves established on the instrument landing system. However, by the time the aircraft reaches here, now starts its descent and also starts slowing down. Well, it means now the rest of the aircraft, they're catching up. Yeah. That's the first challenge. The second challenge is, if for whatever reason the pilot has realised they're no longer stable, they can't land safely, then themselves they will have to initiate a go around. Fair enough. Not only that, if everything goes to plan, you know, you get fully established on the, uh, on the localizer, you do a wonderful landing, you've touched down, but you have missed your vacating point at alpha, right? Which can happen. Uh, it means then you're going to have to back taxi, meaning inbound aircraft can't land while there's another aircraft on the active runway. So we need to be careful. If an aircraft misses the exit or vacating onto Alpha to get off the active runway, you'll have to back taxi. If you have to back taxi, well, then we got to slow down aircraft on approach or they might be told go around. And again, if you go around, you're going to fly out to Ascon, which is just here. Yeah, it's on the chart. So Ascon is here. Then you ramble all the way up to Gorto. And then you ramble all the way back to DRAG. And then you initiate uh, another approach, another ILS. You, and you'll be told, ATC will tell you, go Mr. Approach, right? We now know that, okay, Mr. Approach, fly runway heading, climbing to altitude 4,000 feet. We're going to go direct to Asgon. Then we turn right ourselves up to Gorto. Then we turn right again ourselves over to DRAG. At this stage, you're now going to go back onto Unicom. That's important because you don't need to talk to Tower. They know where you are. He's now dealing with other aircraft coming in. But more importantly, once you're on Unicom, you're able to tell other people approaching this area, hey, I'm headed from overhead Gorto, headed to DRAG at 4,000 feet. Do you know what I mean? We will go through all of that with you. This would be... Worst case scenario, worst case scenario, but we need to know this is the procedure. If for whatever reason, ATC instructs you to go around, or if you're not stable and you need to go around, this is the way I want you to go around. This will be your missed approach procedure. As I said, the real one on the chart is slightly different. That's why I've put in a notum. A notum would always trump what's going on. ATC will always have jurisdiction, if you like. You go by what ATC says if they're going to override it. So it's going to be Asgon, Gorto, back to DRAG. All right, if that makes sense, cool. So, departing from Cork, 
right? Uh, based on the weather and the ATIS, it's going to be departing from runway 16 to the south, okay? So we're going to depart runway 16 and then we're going to put in our SID. At the moment, it's giving me the Cuda 1 Quebec. And when we follow the SID all the way around, our first main waypoint outside of our SID is Corum. Corum is our main waypoint. And we're going to be using this as what's called a reporting point. We want you to report your location, uh, your altitude and your speed once you arrive at Corum. And that'll be done on Unicom. And the reason why we're doing that, it's going to help out pilots who are following you and also pilots who are ahead of you. They're aware of what's moving behind us, right? So this is going to be a reporting point once you get to Corum. It'll be relatively straightforward. Firefly 235 in a TBM, overhead Corum, flight level 60. Grand. That's sufficient. At least now I'm telling other aircraft or other people, hey, look, there's a TBM there. He's over Corum and he's at 6,000 feet. All right. Again, I'll show you this when it all works. Hey, Rustam is here. Good to see you. As we're going, or as we're flying from Corum up to Gillog, this is part of the STAR, the uh, Standard Terminal Arrival. Uh, Gillog, I'll probably get you to shout Tower from here. Just to say, you know, Shannon Tower, Firefly 123, overhead Gillog, you know, 6,000 feet or 5,000 feet or whatever. I'll go through all of this. If you were on VATSIM, usually what would happen, you would only call the tower once you're established on the localizer. And this goes back to our VATSIM top-down system. Tower is the highest point on the top-down system that's online. We don't have approach. We don't have control. We just have tower. Tower is limited in what they can do. They can certainly look after you within their immediate airspace, but usually approach would look after all of this. We're going to focus on what approach does later on in the course. So don't worry about any of that. Tonight, our focus is just this, and it's to get this right so we understand, ah, that's what they mean. Chances are on VATSIM, you know, you might want to do a flight from an uncontrolled airport and land with um, ATC coverage, right? Uh, which, which can happen. More often than not, you will depart somewhere that has ATC coverage and you'll end up on Unicom. And that's exactly what we did last week. So this is the opposite side. We'll depart Unicom and arrive into a controlled zone. Now, there's a couple of different ways of how do we figure out, well, who's online? How do we monitor this on VATSIM? Who do we talk to? And when do we talk to them? We'll iron all of that out in later lessons. Uh, tonight, we're focusing on Tower being online. So strictly speaking, you would only talk to Tower when you are established on the localizer, right? So you've already submitted your flight plan. You know you're going for runway 24 and your star is already published you will then talk to ATC once established on the localizer. For tonight, we might do it. We'll see how the spacing goes, but just have a look at this. We're all going to fly and file the same route. Gillog is our second last waypoint. It's, it, let's call that our initial fix, right? We're going we're gonna to call up the tower when we're at Gillog, and that's only to help us with the flows of moving in. When it comes to the later lessons, this little extra helping point we'll get rid of all of that we'll get rid of all of that but for tonight gillog is going to be your reporting point to atc corum is going to be your reporting point on unicom all right so we'll work slowly but surely and we'll get through it as i said i'm going to do a full demonstration before you guys have to do it uh, and then we'll get in and uh, we'll, we'll learn some stuff along the way all right so back to our website and uh, that's the notum so Make a note of that, right? Have a look at the uh, waypoints, Asgon, Gorto, and DRAG. Okay, if you can't find them, go to the Shannon AIP, uh, which is here, uh, which was there. Shannon AIP, Shannon AIP. Bring it up here now. This is all kind of, this is all free stuff you can get. So let me see, uh, Shannon Approach Localizer. Let's have a look. Dish. So if you go to the Shannon AIP website, just do a Google search, Shannon AIP, right? So it's going to show you Kind of where pretty much everything is if you can't find the waypoints directly well you know the you know the state of the runway right so you're going to be coming in at drag you can see drag here it's highlighted yeah right in there that's drag okay you're going to be flying this direction ascon is roughly here roughly here 
right? So when you go Mist Approach, you're going to be at 4,000, down to Ascon, and then you're going to, or Asgon, and then you're going to fly up this direction. Just go to the outer line, roughly here, at the 12 o'clock position, if you can't see it. If you can't see the names on your chart, just know, look at the Shannon AIP, you want to fly yourself up this neck of the woods. From there, it's back to Darag, or Drag, yeah? There's the things you can do, technology, it's a modern marvel. So that's the Shannon AIP. There's other information there if you need it, but for tonight's lesson, that's what we're going on. All right, we continue on. So we go back. Now we're going to go into our course document. So our ground school document, click on the tile and it'll load in our PDF. So the PDF file embed, there she be. We're uh, now on version 7.3. That is the most current one. And we're going to scroll down. And if we go down to our contents, we're going to find where it has lesson three. Click on lesson three and 15.3, flying Unicom to controlled zone. That's what we're doing tonight. So our third lesson will see us depart from Cork with no ATC coverage and fly to Shannon where we have Tower Online and also we're going to have, uh, whatchamacallit, we're going to have uh, Ground Online, right? I think I've already found a typo in that. So Shannon Tower is 118 decimal uh, 7. Not 1 to 1 decimal 8. Ground is going to be 1 to 1 decimal 8, right? Hey Shane, good to see you. But anyway, this breaks down what we're doing step by step. The pre-flight push and start, and we'll go through all of this now in a moment. I'll explain what we're doing and how we're going to be doing it. That's what all of this is for, all right? But a couple of things we want to look at prior to this. We want to have a look at a missed approach because that might happen. You know, what do we do if something goes wrong and we can't land? We need to focus on that, right? So let me see. We come down here now. I afford. Where's that cat going? Get out of there. It'll only happen once, cat. You've been an absolute hoop. Uh, right now, where are we at? So landing, at sim, aerodrome, taxiway, airport, flight. Where is Jesus? You think I find it, wouldn't you? Missed approach. Here we go. So, uh, page number one two four, and it's at twelve point seven. Right, missed approach. If we encounter conditions preventing a successful landing, such as an obstructed runway or indeed the absence of a landing clearance, initiating a missed approach or a go around is necessary. This could happen on VATSIM as well. You may not have received a landing clearance for whatever reason, the controller is busy perhaps, or they've disconnected, who knows, right? But you don't land unless you have landing clearance. So you, you would go around, you would announce to ATC going around, right? Anyway, the decision may also stem from an unstable approach or the inability to establish the required visual reference by the decision altitude or your decision height, right? Or your minimum descent altitude as well. If the aircraft is not positioned for a controlled touchdown within the designated runway zone, a go around becomes imperative to avoid potential damage or runway excursions. All right. Starting, I'll go through it, don't worry. Regardless of the reason, every airport and runway procedure include a specific missed approach protocol, which factors in ground obstacles, nearby air traffic. That's the why I've done my own no time tonight. And it's crucial to be familiar with these procedures um, and have the appropriate charts readily available. That's what we've gone through. I will go through it again. As circumstances may necessitate a go around at any moment during the approach, in such instances, adhere to the prescribed missed approach procedure unless directed otherwise by air traffic control. This is a very important lesson to go over. Now, again, like everything on this course, you know, we focus on the communication. Your ability to understand how to read the charts and fly your aircraft, well, that has to be at a certain level, but we certainly have plenty of room for the revision, right? So we're going to do some revision. A go around should never be initiated below your decision height uh, in precision approach procedures or below the specified point in non-precision approaches. However, exceptions may apply, such as the presence of an aircraft taxiing onto your intended runway. As in last second on going around. The idea is you would call a go you would call your missed approach long before you're just about to touch down. It's only in like a catastrophic friggin' emergency you need to do with something else, right? So uh, that's what I mean by that. Always prioritize safety and be prepared to initiate a go around when needed, ensuring a smooth and controlled flight experience. In this scenario, Firefly 235 initiates a go around or missed approach at Shannon. It's important to note that the IFR tower controllers on VATSIM are only permitted to provide headings or directs when instructed uh, by a controller above them. 
unlike VFR scenarios. So upon receiving a go around call, so Firefly 235 going around, and the response to that would be Firefly 235, Roger. Now, they could give a whole load of other information. They could turn around and say, okay, fly heading, you know, 360, stop climb altitude 3,000 feet, or fly the standard missed approach, conditional. ATC might tell you to do a number of different things. It could be fly the missed approach, uh, as in the standard missed approach. It could be turn right heading 360, climb altitude 5,000, whatever. Be aware of that. The, the response that you get may not be this textbook sentence. Just to be aware of that. All right. Anyway, the tower controller consults with the above controller, typically approach or control, to receive further instructions. Now, we don't have, you know, higher up control tonight. It stops with tower. Therefore, that's why our little published route is going to be Asgon, Gorto, and then back to DRAG. That's why we've done it that way. And it'll be on Unicom in which ATC will say, monitor Unicom and call me back when you're fully established. Okay, that makes sense. So we, go, we leave him alone. We're now on Unicom talking to other people. I am over this neck of the woods. Oh, wait, I'm about to get to DRAG. I'm now established. Shannon Tower, Firefly 235, re-established on the localizer, and that's it. They'll look after you from there. All right? Um, and this is where you, this is where you'll see it here. So in cases where tower controller is operating independently, they may issue instructions such as fly the standard missed approach, track the extended runway center line, and so on and so on. Once the pilot has control of the aircraft and is executing the instructed maneuver, climbing or turning, uh, the tower controller will either hand control back to approach or control, or indeed switch the pilot to Unicom. If the pilot transitions to Unicom, they must self-vector back to the ILS with a typical radio transmission like Firefly 235 monitoring Unicom 122.8 will report established on the ILS. That's what this is all made up to be, all right? And again, when you look at any chart for any airport, you will see that they have published missed approaches. This is critical for any flight you're going to do on VATSIM when it comes to IFR. Because when you want to land at an airport and all is going well, you must have a look at that missed approach. Usually, we'd, we, we'd, we'd never worry about this. When we fly, we're like, it'll be grand. Do you know, it'll be totally fine. Full reverse, maximum brakes. We've got this. When you fly in VATSIM, forget about that. This is all about trying to make sure you can execute a very safe uh, landing. And if it's not going to happen, you need to understand if ATC say, hey, go around. Uh -huh. And they could tell you at any moment, go around. We need to know what we do. Don't let it worry you. Don't let it panic you. It's just an, it, it's an additional step we need to do when it comes to our flight planning. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right. So uh, do controllers uh, tell you to change to Unicom or do they, like in the US, say frequency change approved? They would tell you to monitor Unicom. They would tell you to monitor Unicom. They could do both, DC Viper. Good to see you, by the way. Uh, but it's usually monitor Unicom and then call us back. All right. So, as I said, don't worry if this is going over your head. We're going to be going through this quite a bit. But it's an imperative step. Your clearance, very important. And we've worked on that already. Your pushback and taxi instructions. Your departure instructions. What happens when you're en route? Then you have your approach. Then you have your landing. This is vitally important. The missed approach, or at least being aware of, where do I go if things go wrong? Think about it. When we did the VFR stuff, because we're visual, well, we know what to do. I, I can't land. I have to go around. Well, we just re-enter the pattern, the circuit. We just re-enter the traffic pattern, and we continue on again until we get around. We can't necessarily do that when it comes to IFR. We can't see the ground. We've no visual references. We have to go by our instruments. And by our instruments, we're going to provide Hello waypoints. There. And the waypoints will guide us back to where it is we need to get to. By issuing an altitude clearance or a stop climb, that 4,000 feet, that is keeping us clear of any ground obstacles. ATC are looking after that because they're saying, hey, 4,000 feet. And that's important. Yeah, that's important. Uh, but yes, so we, we get the idea there, yeah? 
We got the idea there. Thank you for the following. Ah, McShiggity over here on Twitch as well. Thank you very much. Uh, toga and pull up like crazy. It's kind of like a knee jerk reaction. But if you put it this way, if you're ATC and you suddenly see an aircraft, you know, not flying the missed approach. Well, now your focus has to go to him. And meanwhile, they have more aircraft coming up to their approach. It, it becomes messy and be prepared to get, I won't say given out to, but just be aware that you're you're giving um, ATC more work. And we don't want to do that. I mean, we want their experience to be just like our experience. A happy Bob Ross sort of a thing. All right. Brilliant. Now, there's another stage of this uh, where we talk about holds. You know, Johnny Logan, hold me now. But a hold is important. We're not going to do it tonight, but just be aware of what a hold is. So let's say we're all tickety-boo and we're going to be doing our, uh, you know, our star, right? Our published arrival into runway 24. You will see here at DRAG, there's a couple of things on our chart and I'm going to go through the charts with you, but you're going to see this gadget here. Well, this is called a hold, right? This is called a hold. And basically what they mean by a hold is, this is where they want you to stay until further instruction. Quaggy, thank you very much indeed. My dude, cheers, man. Uh, what was that? 29 months, look. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Um, with a hold, these procedures and the requirements, they vary from country to country. It's important. Some might say, you know, you need to keep separation of a thousand feet, maximum speed, are they right-hand turns? Are they left-hand turns? All of that sort of jazz. We're not going to go into it tonight. It is planned for a further lesson, right? And um, because, you know, you can you can activate the hold from using your FMS or your MacDo or you, basically your flight management computer will do that. It'll do all of that. Just be aware if you ever see this kind of an icon where it looks like a circuit, it is technically a circuit, but it's called a hold. And basically an aircraft will enter the hold until cleared by ATC. In very rare circumstances, I've seen holes that actually act part of a transition. Now a transition, the transition is basically how do you get, Consola, how do you get from your star to your approach? So this is a star, your arrival. Well, how do you get from your uh, star to your ILS approach? Okay. Now you might say, well, Murph, uh, what are you talking about? This one here is fairly straightforward. And the reason why it's straightforward, the star leads us directly to DRAG. And from DRAG, it's just a, we turn left because we're going to capture the localizer in and around DRAG. We're going we're to find the thing, which is great. In some airports, you might need what's called a transition to get you from the end of your star to the start of your approach. It can also happen in airports that don't have a published star. Huh? It can happen. You can find airports that don't have SIDS and they don't have stars. Casement Aerodrome was one of them. There's no stars there, I believe. Or maybe there is now one because they have an ILS. But you will find airports that don't have them. They will, however, have the approach. And on the approach, you'll see a transition. So a, a transition is effectively giving you an instruction to fly to a certain waypoint and then you'll fly the approach. For Shannon, we don't need to worry about this just yet. For other airports, we'll look into it. Just to be aware of that as well. All right. So we're doing well so far. Grand. This is what the approach plate looks like. This is our approach for runway 24. And again, we've seen this already. You know, the missed approach was there. And there's some vital information when it comes to our approach because, well, we need to be looking at an ILS, an instrument landing system, because that's the procedure we want to fly into runway 24. You can look at ORNAV, you can look at VOR, there's, there's lots of other ones. We're focusing now on an ILS. The ILS is important. How your ILS works, you have two little stations. Let's call them stations, right? One of these stations is tracking your lateral movements, okay? That's your localizer or LOC. It's looking at your lateral movements. Then you have what's called your ground speed, the GS. Your ground speed is looking at your vertical movements. Your vertical movements, your height, that's what that's watching. You could be established on a localizer, but not fully established on the ILS. And what I mean by that is you could have the localizer tuned in. It's now tracking you, but it hasn't captured the glide, meaning you'll fly the direction of the, of the runway, 
but you won't get your descent. It won't drop you. It won't actually say you're now on the glide path or the glide slope. So you need to be aware of that and knowing when you are fully established. Some aircraft will show you on their screen. It'll come up LOC and then, you know, the GS could be a different color or not fully active. Other, other avionics, they might flash. Other avionics, well, they'll tell you, you know, no capture. You'll also see it on your HSI. You, uh, you'll see like a dial in the middle at the bottom. That's your, vert that's your lateral. And then you'll see a dial on the right. Well, that's your vertical. So it can happen. Your needles will start moving effectively. Yeah. But again, don't worry about that at all. Not for tonight. All we want to do tonight is make sure that we can capture the localizer for runway 24 on the ILS. That's all we want to do. How do we do that? Well, depending on your aircraft, you need to tune in your nav radio system, your nav system, not your comm. Your comms are your communication. Your navs are for navigation. Comms and nav. Right. And depending on your aircraft, even this one here, which is the TBM, if I were to look inside and uh, we'll give this thing a little bit of power, put us on our battery power here for the moment, and I'll get some avionics turned on so we can see what we're happening. Once this comes, once these warm up, you, you'll see it. You're going to have com and you're going to have nav. I'm sure you've seen this before, but see over here now. Now, this is on the GTN 750. You may or may not have this, but look at the 530 as well. That's a default piece of avionics. But your communication channels are on the left. Your navigation channels are on the right. That's all. That's all they are, right? If you want to tune in to a communications where you can see, well, one one eight decimal seven, for example, yeah, and you can transfer the devil, or you go one two two decimal eight and transfer. That's how we do that. If you want to change the nav radio, the navigational side of the house, this is where you need to get the frequency. Now, this could be used for a VOR, this could be used for ORN, it can be used for so many different things. However, if we look at our charts for today, in particular the ILS for 24, we can see that we have a frequency. This fella right here. The localizer for runway 24 is 110.95. 110 110.95. That's important. So we need to make a note of that. So we'd be putting that into the aircraft and we'd be going 110.95. Now our nav is tuned in and it's going to be tracking that ILS. It's going to be tracking the localizer. All right. That's the first little bit of the jigsaw. There's other things here in the chart that you want to be aware of. And it depends on your aircraft. But you're going to have your final approach course. You want to make sure that's on your MCP or it's on your GPS unit to say, this is the direction I should be facing when I'm on my final approach. Okay. Next up, you have your glide, uh, glide slope, right? No altitude published. On other charts, there will be a something there. There will be a something there. So don't worry about that for the moment. The important bit is over here. The ILS decision altitude or your decision height. It's 215 feet. 215 feet. Right. This one here where you see it in the brackets, that's altitude over sea level. That's 200 feet. But at 215, that's your decision height. If you're not established, if you can't see the runway, if you're not stable by 215 feet, you go around. Decision height. Yeah. Most aircraft will go bing and it's doing a thing. All right. So. What else do we need to know? Your airport elevation. That's the height of the um, airport elevation, that's the height of the airport off the ground. Fair enough. Now, we can see a couple of things here. Our missed approach, we've already had a look through it. Okay. Uh, we have information here. So, so our altitude selection, we're going to set it to hectopascals. Hectopascals, that's what we use here. In the United States and North America, you would use inches of mercury. Um, in, over in Europe, you use hectopascals. Um, runway elevation, one hectopascal. Transition level is by ATC, so they'll tell you on the day, but your transition altitude is 5,000 feet. The transition altitude is 5,000 feet. If you're unsure where you're at with transition altitude versus transition levels, it's all in the manual. Have a read back through it if you're confused. Don't need to worry about it too much. Transition altitude is 5,000 feet. Just be aware, any altitude above that when you're talking to ATC, 
any uh, any altitude above 5,000 feet, when you're talking to ATC, you refer to it as a flight level. Flight level 60 is how many feet? Let me know in the chat. Uh, now, you can see information here. Caution. Turbulence and or wind shear may be experienced on approach when wind direction lies in the sector from 264 to 324, crosswind with wind speeds of more than 15 knots. Yeah, 6,000 feet. Well done, lads. Flight level 120. Let me know what that is. DME is required and the initial approach maximum speed is 210 knots. So they're giving you information here of what we're to do. Now, the good news here, depending on your aircraft, 99% of this is already it's already baked into the system. You don't need to worry uh -huh. about all the finer details. But when we're trying to learn of what we're doing, it's very interesting to read this and verify these things as we're doing our approach. Oh, look, I should be. Oh, I am. Look, it's doing the thing. So we're monitoring it. We're monitoring it. All right. Uh, now, there is something interesting here because they're talking about turbulence, right? And what makes Shannon kind of interesting, Shannon is a unique little airport. Uh, in particular when it comes to the ILSs here, because it's known as a altitude deviation hotspot, would you believe? An altitude deviation hotspot, right? Um, now, is that on the chart? I think it was. Uh, Mr. Proch, no. Pans ops. Well, that's what they mean by that. Pans ops, right? But it's, um, what they mean by that is, because there's obstacles there, there's always going to be a little bit of deviation between your published altitude, your required altitude, and what you may actually have to do. Now, there are laws when it comes to ICAO codes. Again, it's to do with how far you are from the ground, you know, 35 feet from any obstacle and all this jazz. Let all that go over your head. It's not important. Not important. However, we do need to know, looking at our chart, well, you see this brown gadget here, and we can see this number. Well, it's telling us, hey, you have an obstacle. It just happens to be a bit of a mountain uh, at 1,792 feet. Be aware of that. Okay. You have something else up here, you know, at 1,000 feet. Be aware of that. So your chart is giving you the information here. All right. Then we can see other things. Again, we can see your ILS DME. That's where the ILS is actually situated. Shannon has fairly broad ILSs. Like, they go on for miles, which is great, especially when you're coming in over the estuary, when you're tuning your radios in. It'll pick it up fairly quick. This part of the chart is your top-down map, top-down view of what's happening. The second part here of the chart, this is the side-on view. This is showing you what things are going to look like coming in from the side, right? So we're coming in from this direction over here. Uh, let me see now. Do some squiggly lines, Murph. We'd be coming in uh, this way here. We're coming in this way. And once we get to Ros Row, you can see this icon in here. That's basically your final uh, approach fix. And then we start our descent, and it's telling us, look, bearing of 237, uh, then we get to our uh, minimum altitudes that we need to, you know, are we landing or not landing? About a half a mile out, that's where we either go around or that's where we go in. Again, every airport is going to be different. Every airport is going to be different. But there is, a, there is something important here. Do not pass MM below 240. Okay. Minimum uh, altitude is there, right? Then there's ground speeds, then there's ILSGS or the localizer descent angle, three degrees. Again, don't worry about this too much. Your aircraft is going to do it automatically. If you want to learn how to do this manually, that's more into how to actually fly IF4 and it's moving us away from our ATC communication stuff. It is interesting. I will touch on it at some other stage, but just to be aware, that's the information on your chart. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right, delete all that scribbling. So that's all grand, Murph. That's how we're going to get into the place. But what do we do at Cork? Because, well, there's no one in Cork, only ourselves. Correct and right. So let's look at Cork. We're going to be using a departure, a SID, standard instrument departure. Okay. And our departure out of Cork is going to be on the Curum, uh, what do we file? The Curum 1 Quebec. Curum 1 Quebec. We can see it there. Okay. Well, let's go in and have a look at the Curum 1 Quebec. So again, we look at our overall chart. We're going to have some information. The transition altitude, 5,000 feet. Uh, ORNAV, Cork VOR DME must be serviceable. If unable to comply with SIDS, advise ATC for alternative clearances. We won't worry about that just yet. Expect close in obstacles right of runway track. There's obstacles. Uh, Non-ORNAV equipped aircraft will be assigned a clearance based on conventional navigation and or vectoring. 
fly runway heading, report when airborne. Something like that. All right. Now, have a look at this. There's information here about our departures. And it says category A and B or category C and D. And then you have RNAV departures runway 16. Don't worry too much about this yet. But you do have this one where it has speed. This is vitally important because, again, this is where ATC might give out to you. So this one here, lads, maximum speed 250 knots if you're below 10,000 feet. Your maximum speed is 250 when you're below 10,000 feet. Now, ATC might overrule that. They could turn around and say, you know, unrestricted climb, unrestricted speed. They might say that. But for this, keep your speed slow. Not too slow, but don't be blasting off because... Well, there's a lot to track on this, all right? Anyway, the SIDs require minimum climb gradients. Again, that comes down to your aircraft. So if you wanted to take the Blerio out for a spin, you're going to struggle, right? Um, but you get the idea. Let's have a look at what we have to do here because it says warning. Ooh, do not climb above. Look at this. We're on the Curum 1 Quebec. Do not climb above 3,500 feet unless instructed by ATC. Well, ATC, we don't have ATC. So in this case, when well, we know that we're going to be climbing to probably five or 6,000 feet. But if ATC was online, they'll, they'll more than likely tell you, by the way, you know, uh, follow the SID. And what? how do we follow the SID? Well, you'll see it. You'll see here on initial takeoff, well, we have altitude restrictions all the way around, right? So you have here, Curum 1 Quebec at 1,000 feet, at 2,500 feet. Then we do our turn. Then we get to Lanro. Then we continue on to CK1, CK2, CK3, and then Kurum. We don't have altitude restrictions along here. But sometimes ATC might tell us, you know, uh, direct Kurum, not below 5,000 feet. But that's a, that's a scratch in the head moment. Okay, we're going to go direct to Kurum, not below altitude 5,000 feet. Okay, we've got to climb so. Do you know what I mean? ATC will say all that to you. We're on Unicom. We don't need to worry about all of this. Why? There is no ATC. They're not telling us what's going on. We do it ourselves. So we're going to say, right, minimum altitude here is going to be 2,500 feet. Then when we head up towards Lanro, we're just going to continue our climb up until our cruise altitude. And depending on your aircraft, it's either going to be 6,000 or, you know, 8,000 or whatever. It's a very short hop, this cork run. All right? Every airport is going to be different. It just is. All the SIDs, all the stars, everything is very, very different. Again, you can have a look at everything here from, uh, from Navigraph. They have everything published, which is just brilliant. Climb via the SID. Again, you wouldn't get that a lot in, in, in Europe, right? But you, in America, they tell you climb via the SID and expect flight level 10 10 minutes after departure. Hello there. You don't necessarily get that in Europe. Uh, you definitely don't get it in Ireland. All right. So that's the idea. So we know what we're doing. We're going to depart Cork on Unicom and we're going to be going on the Kuru 1 Quebec departure. And again, I'm going to go through all of this. I'm going to fly it so you know what the crack is. All right. Then we're going to get to Kurum. We're going to report our position over Kurum. Then we get to Gillog. We're going to give Tower a shout and then we're going to be going in by DRAG. Are we happy enough so far? Okay. Now, I'm going to go through the flight planning stage with you. Just in case there's any sort of, you know what I mean? So we're going to go into sim brief. And I want you to do the following. I'm going to select a new flight. And we're going to put in your airline. Our airline is Firefly Air. Your flight number is your call sign. So if you're Firefly 123, that's where it goes. We are departing Cork. We are arriving to Shannon. And the aircraft I'm going in is a TBM 850. I'm going to select that. Now there are some changes I need to make to this. Cork does not use runway 34. It's not in use for whatever reason uh, on the NOTAM. Not my NOTAM, someone's NOTAMs. They're saying 34 is not used for whatever reason. So we'll scroll down here. We're going to have a look. Schedule block time, that's fine. Departure runway, I'm choosing 16. And it's saying, do you want to select new season stars? Yeah, why not? Our arrival runway at Shannon, it's going to be 24. So make sure you've selected your departure as 1-6 and your arrival as 2-4. That's important. All right. Now you can see our route is going to be the Kuru 1 Quebec, Kurum, and then the Kuru 2 Delta arrival. That's our flight plan. Are we happy enough? I'm going to copy that and I'm going to say, right, file it. 
altitude, 8,000 feet. I'm going to put it in manually. Don't worry about the step climbs. 8,000, oh no, hang on, 6,000 feet. That's all I need. I don't need to go much higher. I'm just going to put in 6,000 feet for my uh, flight for today. Don't worry about anything else. Just go with six or 7,000 feet. And the reason being is once we get to our waypoint up here, we need to be at 6,000 at Gillog. All right. Generate the flight. Now, back over to our TTM website. Uh, let's see here now. Jesus. Uh, open this fella. And I want to show you now how this is all going to look when we plan. So we're going to go into flight planning. Flight planning, right? Now, this is what we're going to start typing in. This is important. Submit a new flight plan, or you can check an existing one. We're going to submit a new flight plan. This has changed, and a big up to Rambog and to Gibbo for updating all of this. So, Firefly 235, I'm IF4. I'm now a TBM 8. Wake is light. Departure cork. Departure time, uh, it's going to be 2115. Altitude, uh, I'm going to go 6,000. Airspeed, 200, give or take. Arrival is going to be Shannon. My alternate, I'm not going to cork, we'll put in Kerry. En route time is 50 minutes. Fuel endurance, minimum two hours. That's quite okay. And here's my route. So I'm going to be from Cork on the Curlum 1 Quebec. Curlum, Curlum uh, 2 Delta, arriving into Shannon. All right? Grand. Submit your divil. Flight plan has been submitted successfully. My flight plan has been filed. Are we with it so far? Yes, no? Yes, no? Okay. So, we want to go back to our lesson. And now we're going to focus on what we're doing with our lesson. So, uh, Unicom to a control zone. I'm going to zoom this divil in here now so we can see it. So, part one is complete. Part two is complete. Part three, we're going to do the flight. Uh, we read our aircraft and its systems. Most likely ATC would not be available. We do have it in our Discord. Uh, but we're going to review the METAR, listen to Unicom, uh, for other traffic out there to get an idea of what's going on. Now, don't fly this leg just yet. Watch what I do. It'll give you an idea of what we're doing and how we're reporting. All right. So I'm going to move this fella over to the side. I'm going to be following this along as what I need to do. And uh, before we get going here, let's have a look. Uh, let's see here now. Cork Atis. I don't think it's working. It is. Temperature 6, dew point 4. Q and H0, 9 or 9 or 0 hectopascals. Landing and departing runway 16. Murph is controlling. Recommend running away. Advise controller on initial contact that you have information November. Okay, we have sufficient information there. All right. So here I am in my little aircraft. Uh, I haven't started it up yet, but I will start shouting onto uh, some traffic on Unicom. Right. So let me see. Into Unicom. And I'm in Unicom there now. All right. So all should be well in the realm. Did she say recommend running away? She did, Frankie. She did. She's great old gas. Uh, so my first call here, well, I'm going to tell people who am I, what am I, where am I, what do I know? Well, I don't need to tell them what I know, but I need to tell them what do I want, yeah? What do I actually want to do here, lads? So I need to tell the gadget what I'm doing, yeah? So it's very simple. If we look at a course manual, well, it's going to explain what we have to do. So this is how it's going to sound, right? Uh, right, I have that set up. So it's going to be... Cork traffic, Firefly 235 is a TBM, starting up and starting up uh, at parking 20, facing north, Cork traffic. That's all I really need to do. So I'm telling them, hey, I'm a TBM, I'm starting up, I'm at parking 20, and uh, I'm going to be facing north. That's it. I'm not waiting for anyone else to talk to me. I've just announced to everyone what it is I'm doing. So I now continue on with my starter procedures in which I'm going to get the aircraft up and running. So bear with me. We're on ground power. Flick it onto battery, uh, ignition comes on, fuel pump needs to be activated. On you go, you devil. Uh, that's all looking good to me, that's looking good to me. Go ahead and get some lights on, navs come on, and we'll go for a start on the aircraft. Are we ready? I didn't bother with the inertia separator, well, don't worry about that for the moment. So looking for about 18% in our NG, then we're going to introduce some fuel. Fuel coming in. 
Watch our ITT for a hot start, our NG for a hung start. And we topped out at 728. As our NG continues to rise, up past 50. Up past 50, disengage the starter. Generator's on, and we continue with our flows. And we're looking good. Okay, so quickly now, on the GTN 750, if you guys have this, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go to Flight Plan, select Menu, Import, from Simbrief, and this will load in everything I need from Simbrief. Very handy, very, very handy. So, loading Cork to Shannon, yes, and that's good. If I go in here and look at my procedures, it's given me the departure, the arrival, but it hasn't yet given me the approach. I'll put in the approach manually. It's going to be an ILS for runway 24. There is no transition. It's coming up as SHA-1 or SHA-2. Don't worry about it. That's just where the VOR is. I'm going to load the approach. Don't activate it. Just load it. So if I have a look at my map now, I can see exactly what's happening. Fair enough. Fair enough. Next up, we need to set up what our autopilot is going to be doing. So reset our barrow to the... Uh, so you can see it here. Hector Pascals are over on the left. Inches of Mercury on the right. And we're going to put in our altitude of 6,000 feet. Go ahead and arm that puppy. And we continue on to make sure everything else is set up. So we're going to put our stall and pedo heats on. Uh, everything else here is looking good. Temperature is probably cold in the cabin. 11 degrees, but it is rising. Temperature outside the aircraft is 6 degrees. Uh, that's not going to get much warmer. Uh, your door is open because I didn't close it because I'm an idiot. Don't worry, lads. All is well in the realm. I loaded the flight plan on the vision jet for the weekend. It was chuffed. Yeah, it's great. It's great the way everything connects. Okay, doors closed. Parking brake is set. That's quite okay. Nav mode. So we need to make sure that our GPS unit... See the CDI course deviation? Make sure it's set to our GPS. Our flight plan is loaded on our GPS. Now, uh, just monitor me. Settings here in the aircraft. That's grand. Squawk. I'm on... I've, I haven't been assigned a squawk, so you go usually with the 1200 or 7000. Depends on the, on the area. Now, when it comes to the GTXs, any of these smaller transponders, if you're not in the airline ones, the airliner ones, you have TA and then you have TA or A. Traffic alert and radar alert. This one we don't. We have standby, on, alt or off. Your TA is essentially on. Just turn it on. Your altitude report is your TA or A. That's your airborne setting because it's going to give altitude reports along the way. So at the moment, just turn on your transponder. All right, right, taxi light, strobes, and we're going to make way to the runway. Again, we need to tell other people what we're doing, yeah? So we do that. Car traffic, TBM, taxiing to runway 16 on Alpha from parking at 2-0. Car traffic. So you're telling them what you're doing, right? Bit of power coming in. We're on forward here now. Now, let's have a look. Gibbo, I can't remember. Did I say to you to jump onto tower for me? Or will we do that later? I can't remember. But it's grand. Uh, I couldn't find the FSR 500. It should be down as an M500. So again, as we're taxiing, you're, you're, depending on your aircraft, you're looking around for other uh, pilots, other aircraft. You're be, you're be very careful of your speed. You know, very, very careful of your speed. So I'm about to enter the active runway. Again, I'm going to talk to traffic. Park traffic, Firefly 235, lining up on runway 16. Park traffic. So anyone on Unicom, if they're in the area, they're going to say, Janie, then there's a fella lining up here onto runway 16. Okay? That's all, that's all we're doing. That's all we're saying to them. Now, let's see how we go here. So, as I'm entering the runway, well, light them up. All our lights are on. Transponder now goes to altitude reporting. Our flaps are already set, and we should be good. Now, before we blast off out of here. 
last couple of checks before we get going, all right? So to help us out, we will be turning right here very shortly, just after we take off, because we're going to be following the SID, yeah? And again, we need to be careful of our altitude. So 6,000 is what I want. I'm going to set a climb rate of about 1,500 feet. I haven't activated any of this on my autopilot. Everything's ready to rock, all right? So we call up Cork Traffic once again, and we're going to tell them what we're doing. Cork Traffic, Firefly 235, taking off runway 16 on the Cura 1 Quebec departure. Cork Traffic. The reason why you say cork traffic twice, if someone only kind of tunes into you mid-conversation, well, they'll know if it's important or not. All right? So, landing lights are on. We're walking, we're talking, and we are squawking. Let's go flying. Take off, power set. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Speed live. The needle is moving. There's 80 knots. Yep, see Daisy. Positive rate of climb, indicating the climb. Gear coming in. We're following our instruments here. Flaps in, yaw dampener on, and we can activate our autopilot. Take the pressure off me for the moment. Let's go in here now and look at our flight plan. Where's our next stop? It's going to be Lanro. Here's our turn. Watch your speed. Altitude is coming up. So far, so good. Cork traffic, Firefly 235, passing altitude 1,500 feet for 6,000 feet on the Cura 1 Quebec departure. Cork traffic. Again, we're talking to the other traffic in the vicinity. So I'm now happily flying along my SID, my instrument departure. I've spoken to traffic around the area. I'm climbing. My aircraft is somewhat stable. I know what's happening. Flaps are in, gear is in, and the aircraft is set to autopilot. I'm now on my merry little way of following the route. If I want to bring up my Navigraph, it's going to show me exactly where I am and what I'm doing. So here we are. So we've taken off from Cork. We're now on the Curta 1 Quebec, and we're heading straight to Lanro. Okay? Hey, Flipper, all you got to see it. Now, what I'm going to do next is to save time so we can focus on what you lads are doing. Oh, behave. You could do this uh, on Unicom, but I just fly the Sid. However, I'm going to break my own rule because, well, I don't want you guys sitting here watching me for the next 20 minutes flying this route. I'm going to give myself a direct to Curum. That's all. You don't do that. Not for this lesson. I'm just going to go direct to Corum because I want to save some time so you're not all waiting on me. So I'm going to say flight plan. Go down to Corum. Corum. Click it. Click it again. And activate. So I'm now going to turn right and I'm heading direct to Corum. You don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to do it. All right? Holy zones. Don't worry, man. It'll all be explained. And it's, it's like everything else, right? It's true repetition. I'm not expecting everyone to get this the first try. And don't let the routing or any of that jazz, you know, wreck your head. It's purely about talking, letting aircraft know. For, for instance, okay, I'm still kind of in the vicinity of car traffic, but I've left. Don't mind this part that I'm going direct. I've told car traffic I'm away now on the SID, on the, you know, the Cura 1 Quebec. That's it. My next reporting point is going to be at Corum. And this is going to be your reporting point as well. Once you're overhead Corum, you call in the traffic and you say, Hey, I'm overhead Corum. All right. Now, the main things we're watching are airspeed, because we have that restriction, not above 250 knots under 10,000 feet. Now, TBM, you're going to do well to get to 250 at this time of the day. But you know what I mean? If you're in an airliner, you really have to be careful. Another important point, especially when you're training and trying to learn things, slow your aircraft down. You don't need to go toga and then lash through this. Take your time. Deliberately slow the aircraft down. Even if you're in a 737 or an A320, bring the speed back. It gives you more time to think and to react. 
if you're going at full speed, there's no need for it. Things will happen probably too quick. You know what I mean? Now, where was it? It was over here, look. Right, we're going well. So now, direct to Corom. Now, again, looking at our avionics, and if you have this, uh, if you have this bit of kit, it's going to tell you, look, you're a couple of minutes out, your distance is 20 odd miles. Looking at the instruments on the aircraft is going to say, look, you're 20 miles from your next waypoint, five minutes out, and we can see what's happening here. Because we're flying by instruments, it's telling us what's happening. Now, the transition level was uh, 5,000. I'm going to keep it on 2.9 or 2.3 because, well, the, the sorry, the transition altitude is 5,000. Transition level is probably 6,500 feet. This is live weather, yeah. So it's at this stage, you're monitoring your aircraft and you're figuring out what's going to happen next. I know I need to give a call once I get to Corum. Now, I'm going to also start getting other things ready. For instance, I'm expecting the ILS-24, its frequency is 110.95. I confirm that looking at my chart. Again, we bring it up, we look at the approach, and we're looking at 110.95. There it is. I need to tune that frequency into my navigation uh, system, into my nav radios, yeah? And there it is. It's, it's in the active area. It's highlighted green. I also need to talk to Shannon Tower a little bit later on, and their frequency is 118.7. Sweet. So for the moment, everything is grand. Speed is looking good. Altitude is looking good. And we're just rambling along. The advantages of, of flying the smaller aircraft, it gives you more time to practice the actual procedures and your IFR skills. Kind of helps with some of the ATC communication as well. Uh, we're always mad to jump into an airliner. However, I will say, pick the aircraft you are most comfortable and competent with. There's no point get, hopping into an airplane, ATC asks you to do something, and you haven't a clue how to do it. Yeah, I pressed the button, but it won't work. You can't do that. You need to know. All right? That's vital for this. Absolutely vital for this. Now, we're looking good so far. Jays, we've got a good few people here tonight. This is brilliant. So, at Corum, this my instruction, just like your instruction, I'm going to broadcast to anyone who's on Unicom, where am I? Who am I? Where am I? And what am I doing? That's all you're doing. And again, there's no real script here. As I said, there's no script when it comes to Unicom. But if we have a look here, I'm after closing the page. I shouldn't have you, big Egypt Murphy. Jesus. I am. <laughs> Let's open that again, shall we? Oh. Come here to me, you big idiot. So let's have a look at this before we get to Corum. Uh, Grand School document. Yes, yes, yes. That's a big 10 for good buddy. Good to say hi. Thank you very much indeed for the Twitch Prime. Cheers, man. So scroll down here to lesson three, because uh, this is what we're doing. So our en route. Pilot, your call sign inbound or overhead away point at an altitude. If you're turning or flying direct due to, this is what we're going to say. There's no real script for this. So we're going to be saying at Corum, Firefly 235 is a TBM, overhead Corum, altitude or flight level 60, direct to uh, whatever the waypoint is. You'll hear it now in a second. Then we have our approach arrival. All right, and this is where this, you know, we'll then talk to Shannon Tower. So follow along the script here with what I'm doing, yeah? And all will be well in the realm. So how's the speed looking? We're going all right, we're about 10 minutes out. But this is, you use this time, usually during the climb or the cruise, this is what you're working on next. And you're listening in, you know what I mean? For instance, I'm probably a little bit far out now, but I could absolutely now jump on to, uh, well, the 8 is for Shannon. No reason why I can't. You know, so if I jump in and say, hey, give me a listen to what's going on in Shannon. Shannon Airport Information Delta. 2100 Zulu. Wind 010 at 3 knots. Visibility 10 or more kilometers. 
Few clouds at 1500 ceiling 3600 broken. Temperature 4, dew point 3. Q and H0, 9 or 9 or 1 hectopascals. Landing and departing runway 24. Rescue 001 will be waiting at the end of the runway. Advise controller on initial contact that you have information delta. Okay, we're sorted, right? So we have information. So on Unicom, I'm now overhead Chrome, right? So this is important. I need to talk to Unicom here. So all we need to do is the following. Uh, Firefly 235, overhead Chrome, flight level 60, direct to Shannon on the Kura 2 Delta arrival. Now, I'm not necessarily talking to any traffic. I'm just anyone who could pick me up. Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing? Yeah. Now, we could be more specific. We could say direct to Gillog. Now, Gillog could be kind of, huh? What do you mean, Gillog? If you're telling them, listen, I'm heading to Shannon, that's easier for pilots to say, ah, okay, but we know where Shannon is. A VFR pilot's not going to know Gillog, right? So, again, Firefly 235, overhead Chrome, flight level 60, direct Shannon. That's all you need to tell them. All right, we know where this guy's going. He's headed to Shannon. Do you know what I mean? So we're staying on with Unicom for the moment until we get up to our next waypoint. All right? Walk traffic. Uh, Fox on the runway on the taxiway Foxtrot. Going to back track uh, on runway 16 to the main apron. Cork traffic. So we're picking up now Unicom with Cork traffic. So that's that's someone on the ground at Cork and are saying, hey, I'm now doing this. Do you know what I mean? That's how Unicom works. Now, it doesn't really apply to me now because well, I've left the area. But if I was coming in for a landing, that's super important. I can now hear someone else is in and around Cork and they're planning to do a something, right? They're planning to do a something. So what I'm going to do here, lads, I'm going to make life very easy because I'm going to pedal on. You're up the yard quick. Remind me now for a minute. I'm using slew mode. Never do this on Vatsim, by the way. But there's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm just flying direct to my next waypoint, which is totally fine. Totally fine. Now, don't go too far, Marv. Go back a bit. <laughs> Roughly here, right? Uh, right. So we should now be at Gillog, and now we're turning left. So let's see will this work. I'm going to give an initial call into Shannon Tower. And let's see what happens, right? So at this stage, I'm now going to put in a descent because I want to be down at 3,000 feet to get onto the localizer. So we're going to arm that and we're going to descend. Speed coming back. I'm going to give Shannon my initial call from here. All right, let's see what happens. Bring in the gadget. Uh... So our initial call could be something like this. Shannon Tower, Firefly 235, overhead Gillog, direct to DRAG, altitude 5,000 feet, descending 3,000 feet, inbound for the ILS, runway 24. Firefly 235, Shannon Tower. Roger, continue approach, QNH 09901, report when on final. Continue approach, QNH Niner, Niner, one, and we'll report on final for Firefly 235. Nice. Now, if we called up ATC2 early, he could jump back and say, you don't need to talk to me yet, you know, call me back when fully established. In this case, Gibbo has said, right, I can see you, Murph. Continue your approach. Here's the Q&H. And uh, give me a shout when you're established. Uh, perfect. Perfect. All right. So at this stage, I'm now hunting where the localizer is. So I'm going to turn on approach mode on my aircraft. Because again, I have the 110.95 already put in. Yeah. And our waypoint now is DRAG. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until my approach has captured. We're coming in on 3000 feet. That's exactly where we want to be. And I'm now monitor all my systems. We're on approach mode. It's verified. I can see approach on uh, my main screen here. Decision height 200, it's actually slightly higher, but don't worry. 
a 215, was it? 210? And now let's have a look. So we're waiting for capture on our localizer. Now we're still on GPS mode. We can keep it on GPS mode or again, or we can absolutely go to nav mode. Right? Let's just see if she'll capture. So DRAG should be down to 220 knots. We're doing fine for speed. Altitude is good at 3000 feet. And we're hopefully going to get a capture mode on our approach. If we don't, we manually do it and we fly it. Because we know the localizer is in around here, yeah? Uh, verify one thing. Did we activate our approach procedure? There's the beep. She's all reading and shouting and everything. So you can hear the beeping. Approach is not active. It's now active. I've just approached that. Approach mode, and we have the localizer, the needle, everything has moved in together. Do you guys hear that? Everything has worked in together. So we've captured it, right? So now we're going to talk to Shannon again. Uh, Shannon Tower, Firefly 235, established on the localizer at 15 nautical miles. Firefly 235, Shannon Tower. Winds zero one zero at three, runway two four, clear to land. Clear to land, runway two four, Firefly two three five. Right? Now, as I'm approaching the airport to land, I can see a couple of things. Approach is active and my glide slope is active. I'm fully established and you can see the aircraft is starting to descend. I have to manually watch my speed. More importantly, I need to tell this aircraft, hey, if things go wrong, I'm going to get myself ready for the missed approach. Altitude will be climbed to 4,000 feet on the runway heading until I get to Ascon. After Ascon, I turn right up to Gorto and then it's back to DRAG. If I'm given a go around or missed approach, the aircraft is somewhat configured and ready to rock. Brilliant. As I'm now continuing on my approach, 2,500 feet, landing lights are on, quick check on all my systems, speed is looking good. A little bit early for flaps and gear yet. I'm just going to continue on in. And we can see the space, right? This is, uh, we're in luck because it's visual. I can see the runway, right? I can absolutely see the runway. And the approach mode, everything is in. Now it's telling me Rosro should be at 3,000 feet. It's okay doing what we're doing. We're descending here very, very slowly. And again, the aircraft is going to have it. Some aircraft are better than others when it comes to vertical speed and gl uh, glide slope and all this sort of jazz. But it doesn't matter. We've just been given clear to land. We just need to get down there. The chart did say, don't be below 220 feet uh, after the VOR, it can, it can, or at the VOR, because it gets dodgy. But apart from that, we're totally fine, right? So we continue on with our approach. While we're doing this, now it's time to have a look. Well, what's going to happen next? Well, all going well, we're going to execute a very beautiful soft landing, right? So if we land, which we will, highly unlikely we're going to get off at Charlie. So we're going to expect to vacate when we get down to Alpha. Okay. So I want to be aiming to make sure I'm stopped and off the runway when I get to Alpha. It doesn't happen. Worst case scenario, I just need to back taxi. ATC will tell me what to do. Chances are ATC will say exit at Alpha anyway. But your job as a pilot, vacate the runway when able. I'm going to taxi Alpha and then I need to get over to General Aviation Parking. So I'm planning the next few stages of my movement, yeah? So like, I'm out here, we'll be landing now in a couple of moments, and then I'm planning what I'm going to do. For the next stage of this, well, I'm going to be talking to the ground, yeah? So if we're talking to the ground, or well, the ground frequency at Shannon is going to be 121.8. So I can put that in here. 121.800. And I'll just leave that there. So I have the next, I have the next frequency ready to rock to see what we're doing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Rambog, yes. So if you're on the ground at Cork, uh, have at it, lads. Have at it. Get me multiplayer turned on here just from my scope. Now speed is good. Distance, what are we? Seven miles. First notch of flaps. Keen effort is back from walking the dog. Man, Keen. Also, depending on your aircraft, some of them can handle a three-degree glide, but GA 
you, you don't need to have that. You know what I mean? They're slower, they're smaller. They don't need to worry about all that jazz. But just be aware that's what's happening. So at roughly 5 DME, and you can see DME, Distance Measuring Equipment, that's what DME stands for, Distance Measuring Equipment. Once our Distance Measuring Equipment says we're at 5 miles, then I'm going to drop the gear. The Pappies, again, they're only relevant if you're going on an actual, uh, you know, an auto land or if you're in an airliner that's behaving with the 3 degrees. So far, so good. Speed is good. We're on one notch of flap, yaw dampener's off, gear coming down, now. Gear in transition, red light flashing. Adjust our speed if we have to. So Unicom is a universal communication system. It's it's basically, it's, it's, it's a frequency that's used outside of all known frequencies. It's more important in the world of, say, a VATSIM. It does, it does work in the real world, um, and it tends to be like for pilots communicating to pilots. More often than not, they use another frequency called CTAF, and VATSIM have started to use CTAF to trialing it in the United States. But Unicom, it's a universal uh, communique. You know, it'll be outside of any of the published frequencies. If that makes sense. Okay, watch your speed. So everyone else who's on Unicom, lads, remember your spacing. Give the aircraft ahead of you a good two minutes before you start taking off. You need to maintain separation the entire way up. That's very, very important. All right. Okay, so I'm now visual. I'm happy enough doing what we're doing. I'm going to go flaps full, autopilot off, and I'm going to try and gently land this machine here. Oh, Jesus, as best I can. There's like a... A two knot headwind, but we're fine. So watch the speed. You're at stall speed there, Murphy. Drive it on a bit. Now I have to exit at alpha, or at least as best as I can, right? Definitely keep separation, yes. Give each other plenty of room. Plenty of room. And again, maintain 200 knots or below. Even in the even in the fast aircraft, 200 knots. Because things are going to be happening, you need to be communicating what's happening around you um, and that other aircraft say, oh, this lad is very far ahead or, oh, he's he's like right beside me, I better slow down. There's our decision height. I'm landing. I've decided, I'm stable, I'm landing. At this stage, you don't abort your landing unless like you see someone on the runway. Ah, Jesus, there's a someone on the runway. You know what I mean? So here's my touchdown zone. Start to flare. Power coming back. And we're going to ease our way in. Nice and gentle. Nice and soft. And you get your devil. 81 feet will take it. Debate it. There's a good decel. Coming down by 40 knots. Out of beta. Flaps coming in. And we're going to exit here to the left at Alpha. Alright? Cheap on the runway, right? So all is looking well. And now we're going to vacate. This stage, we're going to call the tower to say we vacated at Alpha. And we'll be told, jump onto ground. Now, we haven't vacated until we've passed these stop bars. So here's your main line. But we need to pass these fellas here to make sure we are fully clear of that runway. That's important. We're not cleared yet. We've passed the stop bar. We're still not clear. Now we're clear. Channel Tower, Firefly 235 vacated onto Alpha. Oh, I didn't press the button. Shannon Tower, Firefly 235, vacated onto Alpha. Firefly 235, welcome to Shannon. Contact Shannon Ground on 121.8. Bye-bye. Contact Ground, 121.8. Firefly 235. Now we jump over to Ground. Transfer. Shannon Ground, Firefly 235, vacated runway 24 at Alpha. 
Request taxi to parking at General Aviation. Firefly 235, Taxi Alpha, and Apron to GA Parking. Taxi Alpha and Apron to GA Parking, Firefly 235. So my instruction is, Alpha, cross the apron to our General Aviation Parking. And that's it. That is the full thing. I don't need to talk anymore to ATC. At this stage, my transponder goes back on... It can go to standby now because we're finished, yeah? Sometimes the controller might say, stay with me or stay on frequency. That can happen. But for this entire flight, I'm done. That's it. Mission complete. All right? So what I'm going to do here, lads, uh, this is going to be important. We're going to just move the aircraft over because I need to jump into ATC uh, as we monitor everyone else coming in, right? So I'm going to just stop. Uh, I'll stop the kettle here. Uh, master warning, don't worry about that. Uh, get our landing lights off here as well, not to be annoying people. And all should be well in the round. Right. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh, this could put me playing up in the air. Oh, it did. Look. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the humanity. Right. Now we're grand. So I need to go into my scope. Here's my scope. And I can, see, that. I can see some people's coming in. So let me see. I'm going to start a test two. Who's test two? Right. Don't know who that is. Uh, let's have a quick look here now. So I am on the Shannon Tower frequency. That's where I live now. So I'm now on Shannon Tower. All right. Hey, Whiteley, good to see you. So who's this guy, lads? Test. Anyone know who this is? Where's he headed? No factor that I need to worry about, but we'll see. So Firefly 305, let's have a look at you. So you're going to be one of me. That's Streeter. Uh, and then we'll have a look at anyone else departing out of Cork. Don't think he's one of ours. Okay. So this is my scope. This is what I'm looking at now, lads. And this is what ATC is going to do. The same, right? So I can now see, right, look, there's aircraft. There's a whole load of aircraft. And they've already started on their way. And they're heading along. And Kurum is where you're going to do your initial call on the Unicom channel. Then once you get up as far as Gillog, that's when you're going to give me a shout. Because I'm now looking after the tower. Gibbo is looking after the ground, which is here. So I'm parked up. I'm no factor. And uh, Gibbo's going to be looking after traffic once you get on the ground. But from this view, I'm looking after traffic that's already departed. So we can see Firefly 305 is on the way. I have him here. Arrival runway is 24. And all should be well in the well. So we have Streeter, 505. Is he the first departure? Ah, we have more here, look. So Firefly 226. Is he airborne? 226 looks to be airborne. So we have 602 moving next. Good stuff. I can already see the space and ads. So give yourselves a good kind of minute, two minutes, yeah? We're causing trouble again. Colonel Fork, it's great to see you. How are you, man? Uh, BombTech says, what program? This is... No, no, it's live ATC. Uh, and it's using our own network. So we're using Euroscope. This is pretty much what the main lads use. Now, am I right in saying we only have one aircraft moving at the moment? I think so. Okay, we have another aircraft starting to move now. So it looks to be 308. Let's have a look. So my area of influence, I only need to start worrying about fe uh, folks when they come up around Gillog. Yeah? More to tears at work. Would rather be flying or fixing my video. Ah. Great to see you, Colonel Fork. Hope all is well. 
So we have 305 here as well, have we? How are we getting on a cork, lads? Departures. Okay, 602 is now airborne. D D D D D D D. Okay, we're getting there. There's Fred. He's airborne. That's good spacing. Very good spacing. Hey, the pilot's here. Good to see you. Uh, great lesson. Shame I'm not going... Uh, shame I'm not doing great to watch, though. Don't worry, man. We'll catch you next time. Like, again, right? If any of this is going over your head, don't worry at all, at all. It'll be grand. We're going to figure this one out. We're going to take our time with this. You know, um, can I make that screen smaller now? I can see, like, the flight plans that you guys have filed. I can see you now moving. You don't need to worry about squat codes or otherwise. Just keep doing what you're doing. So just see these lines. I have this set to about three minutes. We can go nautical miles either. But three minutes is more than enough. This is relatively comfortable, all right? So just remember, lads, give each other about a minute or two off the ground uh, just as folks are lining up. So if we jump back into Cork, that's Cork. Dee 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 dee. There's Cork. So we got a we got a good bit of moving on Cork. So four oh six. When you're ready, lads, just keep her moving. The giant that pushed the plane, right? Hello there. Okay, 308 looks to be going ahead. Nutrient Ape! Thank you very much indeed for the follow. Welcome aboard. Okay, so there's a whole load of traffic below, but it's grand. So here's two aircraft that I'm tracking. We have Firefly uh, 305 and Firefly 602. And they're following along their departure and then they're going to get to Corum. They're thinking, they'll, they'll give a shout at Corum, yeah? Rambog is not on scope but you're between those. Why am I picking you up Rambog? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, there's Streeter. There's a whole load of people below in Cork. Okay, it might take a few minutes just for the gadget to reset, but we'd be grand. So my camera is pretty much going to be set up this direction here as I'm watching people approach the runway, yeah? So this is pretty much where I want to be, and we'll make it a little bit brighter during the day so we can actually see the arrivals. How's that, lads? Uh, Whiteley, yes, we are using that. Might be too far away. Uh, do you have the connection running? I do. Let's verify that it's on. Turn it off, and turn it back on again. Okay. We've 308. Ah, here's 226 now. Getting you now, Rambog. So 226 is here. Now, looking at this, 602 and 266. You guys are way too close together. So here's a prime example when we talk about separation, okay? So looking at this, 226 is actually ahead. Therefore, 602, you got to get better uh, separation there. We can see how close you guys are together, yeah? One is at 5,000 feet, one is at 160. Oh no, 5,000 as well. Jesus. Ah, one's going to 9,000 feet, one's going to 5,000 feet. So you have 737 versus a vision jet. That's okay. Don't worry about it, Rambog. Now, keep the departures coming, lads. If you need to, drop it down to a minute and a half. 308 seems to be moving. I oh, see so you can smite. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. Okay, so from the controller's perspective, we can see now that Firefly 305 should be heading towards Corum. 
And after Karom, it's going to be up to Gilog, then it's going to be Drag. And I can start seeing some of the sector list aircraft here. So this is what, you know, this is what ATC, that's what they're looking at. So us in the sim have beautiful scenery and we have instruments. We have all this sort of jazz keeping us going, yeah? ATC don't have that. That's why it's, it's imperative that, you know, we need to go exactly where they want, when they want. You know what I mean? There's 226. There's 305. He's now heading towards Karum. 308 is airborne. Who else is coming out? There's a someone down here. Who be this? That's 308 still. This guy over here, no factor to us. So when you listen in to, uh, you have a thousand feet separation. Okay. Hey, Rocket Rick, good to see you. When I fly Unicom uh, space and into ATC controlled area, do I contact them or do they contact you? You must contact them. So if you're flying into what's called a controlled zone and it's towered or, you know, there's someone active, you 100%, you talk to them. You talk to them. All right. You are doing very well. You are doing very well. Now it could be slow moving, but don't worry. Like, how are we going for time? We're all right. We'll get everyone done here. Just make sure you're giving about a minute between departures. You don't need to wait two, three, five minutes. That's that's overkill. Once you get airborne, that'll you'll be able to slow down a little bit better. Okay, it's just to get the speed up here a little bit. So we can see now that we have Firefly three zero five approaching Colum. Two to six is coming in behind. Three zero eight is well on his way. And we keep an eye then on the rest of the departures. You contact them before entering the zone. Correct. So for example, right, Shannon Towers control zone usually starts just after DRAG. It's when you're established on the ILS. If it was only tower on. Okay. And re realistically, I mean, tower really only looks after this neck of the woods here. Only that. It's like it's, it's pretty much the immediate airfield. However, for this one tonight, we're going to say contact them at Gillog, which is a waypoint. If they were to do that on VATSIM, chances are they'd probably say, yeah, go on ahead. Or they might say, you know, you don't need to talk to me yet. Give me a shout when you're at DRAG. That can happen. If we were using approach, if we had approach online, then you're looking, you're going to be looked after. If you had control online, they're going to look after you. You'd be talking to them well in advance. Well, well, well in advance. Yeah. If you're flying via 4 and you're underneath that airspace, well, you don't need to talk to them at all. ATC might send you a contact me, but it is the pilot's responsibility to call before entering a control zone. 100% Memphis done. So if in doubt, if in doubt, when you look at your vPilot client, right, it'll come up on the screen what frequencies are online. You can drop your, uh, your controlled area. So if you're flying into Shannon and you see Shannon Tower, just double click it, it'll open up a message window and just drop them a little message. Good evening, hello, how are you? When would you like me to call? I'm flying direct to you. Or am I okay to call you at Gillog? Again, it's giving them as much information. They're now aware they don't need to worry about you. You've already spoken to them. The biggest challenge is when a controller comes online and you haven't copped it because you're, you're scanning and you're waiting to see and then they're giving out to you. Oh, you should have called me earlier on. Number one, they need a kick in the arse because, well, they're not helping you. Usually they should message you to say, I'm now online because you're, you're looking for something like vPilot to say, ping, the controller is now online. Okay. But like it can happen where you can't see it. You, sh you need to be watching it, but it can still happen. Do you know what I mean? So if you get a controller like that, yeah, no worries, boss. We'll, well, no, we'll, we'll do how we get on. It shows active controllers uh, on things like Volanta. It does, but the problem is when you use something like Volanta or VAC glasses or any of these, there's always going to be a little bit of a delay. There's always going to be a little bit of a delay. Do you know what I mean? Right, I can. It's good to see you. Wondering uh, if it is allowed to spawn in in a controlled airspace, of course, after filing the plan and not interfering with other traffic. If you want to spawn in in a controlled airspace, you're just spawning in at the airport. Yeah? You spawn in at the airport and you make sure you don't spawn in on an active runway or a taxiway. Do you know what I mean? Don't spawn into the sim in the middle of someone's airspace. 
unless you have told them well in advance. Am I okay to join here? My sim crashed or I just want to train. I'm going to appear at this waypoint. Talk to them first. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, might be about 90. Uh, this might be about 90% similar to what your country uses. Uh, what's that now? Yeah, it depends. Unless you're under flight following or ATC control, then they hand you off. Yeah, usually. Got to get back to beta testing. Uh, White leg. See ya. So let me see. Three oh eight is moving. Uh, three oh five. Wait, no, three oh five. Have three oh five. There's two two six. There's six oh two. There's three oh eight. So one two three four. I've only four aircraft moving at the moment. Who else is moving? Eight oh seven. Good stuff. Two oh seven. Good stuff. Okay, we got we so the scope is very much alive now, right? Um I mean after a sim crash for instance. Yeah, so Roy, the best thing to do is always contact the controller before you're going to do a something like that. Because they could be busy. They may have already vectored or routed another aircraft to your starting location. And if you suddenly appear, you're gonna give them all sorts of drama. So if you just talk to them, send them a message, hey. I had a CTD, I was flying here, may I reconnect at this location? Or can I? You don't, have to, you don't have to be very polite or, you know, politeness goes a long way. But you get the idea. Just talk to them first. Most of the time, unless they can't, well, they're going to help. ATC, anyone in ATC, but well, they're going to help unless they can't because they're very busy or, you know, whatever. So we should have had already uh, 305 and 602 shout over Corum. And 226 should be shouting over Corum as well. So 602, you're too close to 305. So Firefly, that's Fred, is it? You're right on the limit of your of your distance there. So Fred, you'll need to slow her down a bit. If you're watching. And then I'm expecting it to jump into the tower frequency. Uh, do you do much ATC showing? Very little. I, I like... Lads, I'm not in any way qualified uh, or experienced to do ATC. I know enough to know I don't know enough, right? Um, but the whole idea here is it's focusing on giving you guys enough uh, of a foundation to start somewhere and then keep going. Every time I do a flight in VATSIM, I absolutely learn something new. I'll hear something different. I'll, you know, I'll see a different procedure. I'll go to somewhere else in the world just to figure, hey, what do they do? Wow, look what they do. That's different. It's very interesting. Do you know what I mean? But every time you do it, you're going to pick up something else. Do you know? Holy zoinks. This channel was so much fun. Well, sure, do you know what you can do, holy zoinks? God love you. Jesus, that was a bit harsh, holy zoinks. Uh, where are we at now? So much waffle. Why are you talking about waffle? Jesus. The poor old devil. He doesn't like the course. Uh, that was the only issue I had. Everything else was quite clear. Uh, nice, nice. 100%. Right, okay. So we're going to be waiting for people to give us a shout here now. Look at it. No different than the history stuff that we've done. You know, it's it's, you know... Some people like this, some people don't. That's, and it's quite okay. It, it doesn't have to be for everyone. You know what I mean? Uh, is this on Iveo? Uh, Matt, uh, no, no. This is on, uh, this is our own network. So what Rambog and Gibbo have managed, um, you know, it's, it's quite genius actually, because for the very first time, we can monitor Xbox and PC traffic within a radar environment. Eh, it's never happened before. It's nuts. Absolutely nuts. So 305 is going to be first. 602 is looking good. 226 is looking good. This is fairly good spacing. Uh, let me see. 308 is doing good. 807. We can see you now. Uh, 207 is now airborne. Looking good. Appreciate the comeback, good buddy. Uh, Captain Shark, super chat at 5. Oh, thank you very, very much indeed. Cheers, man. Very kind of you. Now, we seem to have someone... Uh, let me see. 406... 
let's keep an eye on him because he doesn't seem to be going by the SID. But again, don't worry about it too much. The focus here, lads, is the ATC. It's the communication. Greg says, I control in VAT air myself. Oh, good man yourself, Greg. Have to say, fair play to you for doing this. Can be overwhelming connecting to VATSIM, but definitely makes life easier for everyone. Dude, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Um, and, and it's... Flying on VATSIM is such a great way to enhance your flight sim experience. It may not be for everyone. It's not for everyone. But if you've any way, if you're any way interested in it, and you know, you want to take kind of that next step with your flight simulation hobby, you know, this is a great way to learn. And this environment that we have set up, it's to kind of break the ice. It's not to, it's to kind of demystify the worry about what we're trying to do. And having a scope here so we can see what goes on to show it from a controller side, it's a great insight. It helps kind of join the dots, do you know? Uh, Rocket Rick says, for the two minute spacing, is it the responsibility of the plane behind to slow down? Y yes, as best you can, yes. Uh, Greg says, started my flight training recently. Uh, I was able to interact with controllers immediately in real life purely because of VATSIM. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, you keep saying 26 for Rambog. 266. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, I may just be lurking during the course uh, streams, but they've been highly educational and useful. Love them to bits. Don't let the E just tell you otherwise. Thank you, Energizer. You're back in the will. <laughs> it's a bit windy. It is. It is. Lads, listen, if it's not for everyone, that's totally fine. I've, you know me, like, when it comes to content. I've done stuff some folks just don't like. But that's okay if you don't like it. You hope is everyone likes it, but, like, you know, that's never going to happen. Um, if they're sending a Dash 8 behind a Cessna... I'm in a glass case of emotion! If they send a Dash 8 behind a Cessna, uh, they will allow the Dash 8 to overtake as it'll climb well above. Usually, yes, usually. Uh, Beyond ATC is a nice tool for learning as well. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But again, you have to pay for that. This is free. But yes, uh, you could use all of that. Right, so I'm expecting a call here now from Firefly 305. Right? So let's have a look. Any moment, we should get a call from Firefly 305. There he is. He's in an A320. <gasps> There's going to be a call coming in. Uh, turn on the radios. Radios are on. Radios are on. Uh, commercial traffic will always have priority over VFR. You generally be told to orbit. Yeah. 100%. Shannon Tower. Fly... 305 established uh, inbound to DRAC descend into 3000 feet. Firefly 305, Shannon Tower, good evening. Continue and call me back when established for runway 24. I hope we heard that. Did you hear that? Firefly 305, Roger. Report when established on the ILS for runway 24. Oh yeah, I had to do 360s for spacing along with an next arrival. 305, callback when established on runway uh, 34, 24, 24. Uh, 24, that's it. Okay. Now, lads, don't worry if you make a mistake. Don't worry if you jumble the words wrong. That's quite okay. It's only us here, right? Um, just remember, you're going to get yourself established on an ILS. It's runway 24, okay? And it's it's the main thing you're doing is your separation. And so far, it's it's very, very good. So 3.05, he should be almost established now. But let's see what's going to happen. 6.02 probably gives a show from Gillog. 266 will give us a show from Gillog. And then we have 308, 308 rather inbound as well. Let's have a look down here. Here is 807. And we have a bit of crack over here. Look, here's 207. 202. 406. So lads, this is where it's important. You need to start talking to each other just so you can keep that spatial 
uh, awareness up, yeah? You don't want to be too close. Just make life a little bit easier. Give yourselves a little bit of room to maneuver. Shannon Tower, Firefly 602, inbound, the rag 6,000, descending to 3,000. Firefly 602, Shannon Tower, hello. Continue and call me back when established Firefly on the localizer. 305. Established on localizer, runway 24. Firefly 305, winds 0901 knot, runway 24, clear to land. Up your dividend. You might arm broke. <laughs> so 305, you just need to report back. Firefly 305 wins 0901 knot, runway 24, clear to land. Ah, we can't get talking to him. Clear to land, Firefly 305. Good stuff. And Firefly 602, just to confirm, call me back when established on the localizer. Okay, so 305 Firefly is Firefly 602, confirm, will call back when established. Super lads, you're doing great. Clear to land, Firefly 305. Perfecto. Ah, give, give us back in the bill. I didn't even see that message. That'll tell you. He says, Murph, you got me on VATSIM through your courses. Enough said. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, are those other players? Uh, Tricky Ricky, how are you? Yeah, they are, man. We're listening to them calling in. It's not VATSIM, Captain McCoy. It's our own version. So we're able to log in Xbox and PC pilots. It's all about learning this together. That's all. We're just learning this together. So... Um, we want to break the ice. We want folks to, you know, it's it's not a science or this mythical beast. It's it's a bit of fun, right? Um, but, you know, we want folks to learn it. We're fat. Yeah, we're fat. <laughs> okay, so the scope is working. We can see the lads coming in. All is looking good. This is where the challenge comes in, right? So we can see 305 is on approach. 602 is going to Firefly call Firefly 602 established on localizer Shannon Tower. Firefly 602... Uh, continue approach. You are number two. I will call you back with your landing clearance. Expect a late clearance. Here's a curveball. Number two, expecting late clearance. Shannon Tower, Firefly 602. So see the way it's changing slightly. That's not really scripted. But already you guys, okay, well, just repeat what I'm being told. And you're pretty much grand. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't clear him Shot just yet. Tower, uh, Firefly 266 overhead, Gillog descending through uh, uh, flight level 55. Firefly 266, Shannon Tower, continue approach. Report back when established on the ILS. Continue approach, we'll report on the ILS, Firefly 266. Now, there's going to be a bit of crack here, because we can see that these two lads, well, they're fairly close. We have an A320 coming in, and then we have a 73 coming in as well. So his late clearance, this is where spacing kind of gets challenging. So we can see, right, what's the distance? There's, is there three minutes between both of these guys? Uh, kind of, right? So 602 is going to be under pressure now uh, to get landing clearance. He's a little bit close. Firefly 602, reduce speed to minimum if possible. So his minimum speed that he can take... Cause Firefly 602, reducing speed. So he's currently at, what, 163? He's in a 737. He'd probably hold about 130 knots. And it's just to give 305 enough time to get down. Do you know what I mean? But it's good now that you guys are seeing this. This is the challenge. You have an A320 cleared. He's on final approach. Behind him, you know, you have a 737 inbound. What we need to make sure is that A320 needs to get down, landed, and vacated before I can get the other guy in. That makes sense? And then we have a vision jet behind all of them. Vision jet, I'm not worried about. We can slow him right down if we need to. He can go down as low as 100 knots. Then we have other aircraft coming in as well. Depending on what they're flying, this is where the challenges come in. And it's fun, right? It's fun. If we manage... If this works, we should get the two of them down. Worst case scenario, it'll be a go around. Here comes the A320. Looking good so far. 
Looking very good. Touchdown! So now the challenge is, can you get off the runway in time before I get Fred in? Yeah? And that's why I told him, expect a late landing clearance. So he's not panicking, thinking, ah, does the tower know I'm about to land? I've told him, expect a late landing clearance. Yeah? So once this guy has cleared the runway, I can then give the next guy uh, his clearance in. His landing clearance. All right? So far, so good. You could get that. ATC might tell you in a VATSIM environment, expect a late landing clearance. Okay. Get your speed down. Help the controller Shannon out. Tower Firefly 266 established on the ILS runway 24. Firefly 266, Roger, continue approach. You are number two. Expect a late clearance. Number two, expect late clearance. Firefly 266. Firefly 60305, Firefly clear of runway. Firefly 602 wins. 0901 knot, runway 24, clear to land. Firefly 602, runway 24, clear to land. Diddly diddly diddly. And Firefly 305, welcome to Shannon. Contact Shannon Ground on 121.8. Firefly uh, 807, inbound to Gillog, descending to altitude 3,000 feet. Firefly 807, Roger, continue approach. Call me back when established on the localizer. Okay, so we're hoping Firefly, uh, what was the number? He should be now talking to Shannon Ground, which I think he is. Yeah, Streeter. Okay, he is. Okay, so we have the 737 inbound. We have a Vision Jet inbound. And we have a bit of traffic coming up the side here as well. So who else is moving? So let me see. We have 202 and we have 207. They're very close. Don't have him. Firefly 303, he's moving. Firefly 506, he's moving. Uh, six, oh, or 006, he's moving. 048, watch your... Um, lads, just be careful of your separation. Look, there's a bomb of you moving there together. Give yourself some space, yeah? Traffic, uh, Firefly 308. Uh, overhead, uh, Gillock, flat level 30. Direct to Dirac uh, for inbound ILS 24. Firefly 308, Roger, continue approach. Uh, report when fully established. Continue approach. Report when fully established. Firefly 308. And Firefly 266, reduce speed to final approach speed. Reduce to uh, final approach speed, Firefly 266. Just give him a little bit of a chance here. So we have the 73 coming in. He's doing a great job. So far, so good, lads. Just be careful of your spacing, yeah? Just be careful of your spacing. Otherwise, someone's going to get a go-around, right? Uh, where does this take place in? This is based out of Shannon in Ireland. Echo India November November is the... Uh... Who's in charge? You haven't a clue what you're doing. <laughs> this <laughs> Real Simpile, good to see you. Um, it's in Shannon in Ireland. In Shannon in Ireland. Uh, there's a full course manual here. It tells you everything you need to do. So on, so good. Like, it's, it's, lads, you're doing a great job. It's absolutely incredible. Like, honestly, you're doing a phenomenal job here. This is really, really good. Now, if anyone goes beyond Alpha, then the crack will start. <laughs> right? Now, where's my scope? Uh, Firefly 602, vacate at Alpha, contact Shannon Ground on 1 to 1 decimal 8. Bye bye. 602, vacating Alpha, switching ground. Thank you. Firefly 266 wins 0 to 1 0 at 3 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Runway 24, clear to land, Firefly 266. There's a bit of crack over here. Look, 807 and 406, they're way too close. So 308, I'm expecting now to get onto the... Uh, so see see, the, see all these red 
not just here, lads, right? These are too close. You just need to give yourself space. So you have a TBM and you have an A320. The A320 is going to be a little bit harder to fly. So Firefly 406, if I were you, I'd give him a wide berth. Wide, wide berth. But we'll see what happens. So I'm expecting 308 to give us a shout here now to say he's established. Uh, Paul, negative, negative. Uh, Nerdy Gamer says, hi chat, what's the airport code by the way? I'm not going to be flying on VAT soon because I'm on Xbox and uh, yeah. Uh, Nerdy Gamer, you can actually do this course on Xbox, funny enough. Uh, we're on, um, yeah, it's Microsoft Flight Sim. You have caca situation happening. We do, there's a lot of close aircraft here, but Grant, just work together, lads. Talk on Unicom, give yourself some space. Uh, the Firefly 308 established on localized on runway 24. Firefly 308, continue approach. You are number two. Expect late landing clearance. Continue approach number two. Expect late clearance. Uh, Firefly 308. Okay, so Rambog is inbound. Uh, and he's in a small little aircraft, so we'll have to watch him. Uh, Gibbo is looking after ground, by the way, lads. So once you get handed over to ground, that's where you're going to be chatting. Uh, where? Who's this now? That's weird. Where's 266? How did I lose 266? That's interesting. There he is. So we're going to release 266. And we can probably talk to Rambog now because he's doing very, very well. He's down and safe. Firefly 266, fake Kate at Alpha. Contact Shannon Ground on 1 to 1 decimal 8. Bye bye. I'm back at Alpha and over to ground on 121 decimal 8. Bye bye. Firefly 266. Lads, you're doing absolutely brilliantly. Like, honest to God, you're doing fantastic. So, Rambag, once he exits the runway, I can give the next landing clearance. Yeah. Now, Cornwolf and. Uh, Jesus, who's that? Panther Leopard. Just give yourselves a little bit of space, lads. Yeah. A little bit of space. Let the A320 come in if the TBM can just hunker back. Because you can go a lot slower than he can, yeah? That's all we're doing there now. So Rambog is about to exit the runway. Just wait for him to clear. And then we can give our next landing clearance. Merce Discord voice is so quiet. Kazaki, yeah, I was trying to increase that. I'll shout if I need to. Tell me to speak up if you can't hear me. Firefly 308 wins one... Correction, wins 010 at three knots. Runway 24, clear to land. We have to land runway 24, five flight trees are right. Sweet! Now, there's going to be a bit of crack here, look. Someone's going to get a go around. Oh! That TBM, you got to slow right back. <laughs> right back, man. Right, the space in here is getting a little bit better. 301 is airborne. So far, so good. Still got a few more people down on the ground at Cork. When he's already, lads, keep her lit. This is pretty mad looking, though, isn't it? Look at the traffic coming in. It's brilliant. Right, this should be interesting. That 406 is going to be under pressure. <laughs> he's going to be under savage pressure. Shannon Tower, five flight 807, established on the localizer runway 24. This could be interesting. Firefly 807, Roger, continue approach. You are number two. Expect a late landing clearance. Shannon Tower, Roger that. Late clearance, number two. Shannon. Okay. Be grand. Keen Lafford, good luck to you. Best of luck with your Irish test tomorrow. You're going to be grand. Uh, Rocket Rick has been the first has been doing the first wings events on Vatsum also. Yeah, they're awesome. If you can get your, you know, if you can get into those, they're really, really good. You know? Really, really good. So this is the challenge now. 807 is established. 406 is coming in right behind him, but he is giving it looks like he's giving him a bit of space. This will be interesting. So we have 308. 308. There he is there at a thousand feet. He's on final approach. 
How are we going so far, lads? How many other players do we have? I don't know. We have a lot tonight, haven't we? We have a lot tonight. I just wanted to wish you two good luck. <laughs> Max Shigley, do you see uh, Firefly 254? Let's have a look. Uh, whereabouts are you? I don't see a 254. Are you on the Southeast Asian server, Max Shigley Pilot? Iceman says, just to confirm, must we do a go around or full stop landing? It's a full stop landing. Southeast Asia? I'm not seeing yet. Uh, Rambog, maybe give the owl gadget a quick cycle, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Okay, how are we looking up here now? Where's 406 going? He needs to call us when he's established, so he's probably just giving him a little bit of room. Okay. Our C25 is down. Beautiful. Beautiful! Good landing. You absolutely nailed it, man. You nailed it. Firefly 308, welcome to Shannon. Vacate on Alpha. Contact Shannon Ground on 121.8. Bye-bye. Access to Alpha. Would you please read the frequency again? 122.8? Uh, correct. Uh, Shannon Ground on 121.8. 121.8. Thank you. Three, uh, Five flight is 308. Two. Firefly 807 wins 010 three knots, runway 24, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 24, Firefly 807. Now, I'm expecting 406 to give me a shout because 207, the rest of them are getting in close, so. Five flight 308, vacated runway 24. Good stuff. 308, uh, yeah, just over the ground. Now, did I release him? I did, I did. Oh, now, where are we at? We're over here. Uh, Tricky Ricky says, so cool. At first it looked like boring. It's actually cool as hell. Oh, it is kind of cool. It shows you what controllers need to do. You know what I mean? Shannon Tower, FFA 202. Overhead Gerard descending to 3,000. Firefly 202, Roger. Continue approach. Call back when fully established on the localizer. Where's this guy going? Firefly 406, Shannon Tower. Bum, ba dum, bum. <laughs> bum, ba dum, bum, bum. Okay, he should be on my frequency. Uh oh. This is going to make things interesting. Who's 406, lads? Firefly 406, Shannon Tower. Do, 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 do. This could be interesting. Uh, Firefly 406 is homie. Is he on comms? Okay. Sent from flight level 160 uh, into Gillog. Uh, five. 
if someone can jump on to Unicom and tell 406 to give us a shout, because uh, he's in trouble there. This is interesting. Firefly807, welcome to Shannon. Vacate at Alpha. Contact Shannon Ground on 121.8. Bye-bye. Firefly807, vacating runway 21 at Alpha. <laughs> He's on Unicom. He needs to get off Unicom. Let's see what's going to happen here. So Firefly 406. Jesus! Wait, 207, is he established? <sighs> Firefly 207, Shannon Tower. Shannon Tower, Firefly 207, just established on Localizer. Good man yourself. Firefly 207, Roger. Wins 010 at 3 knots. Runway 24, clear to land. Runway 24, Firefly 207. Okay, did we get 406 there? Let's see here now. Homie, you're up the yard. Firefly 406, Shannon Tower. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. Shannon Tower, FFA 202. Established on the localizer for runway 24. Firefly 202, continue approach. You are number two. Expect late landing clearance. Firefly 406, Shannon Tower. This is interesting. Bum, bum, bum. He was there and then he jumped away again. Okay, it looks like he disconnected. Okay, not to worry. Don't let don't worry. If this goes like completely out of your head and you get lost, don't worry. Um, Fireflies four zero six. Yes, is that uh, Murphy? So uh I had issues with the plane. Firefly 406, that's okay. Um, I'm going to give you some vectors if you can follow my instruction. I want you to turn left heading 090 and maintain altitude 4,000 feet. Correction, that'll be turn right heading 090 and maintain altitude 4,000 feet. Oh, Jesus, he's going down. <laughs> uh, is the frequency displayed on scope based on Discord channel that person is in? How do you make only registered users display on the radar? Once they're on the... Uh... Copy, heading 090, maintaining 4,000 feet. Good man. Right, we'll vector him now in a second. Shannon Tower, Firefly 408, uh, just past Killock, direct to DRAC. Firefly, four, Firefly 408, continue approach. Uh, call me back when fully established. We'll call back when fully established on ILS, uh, Firefly 408. Okay. Where's 406 going? It needs to be going 090. So that's heading east. Yeah? Actually, your mic is broken. Ah, Jesus! Uh, drop us, if you want to go by text, Maxiggity. Firefly 406, I can see the runway. Um, am I clear to land? Firefly 406, negative. 
you need to turn to heading 090, climb and maintain altitude 4,000 feet. You are not clear to land. Hey, Dan, good to see you. Cyrus, good to see you. We'll be grand. We'll get through this now in a second. Because that is in a C-160. Jesus, this is going to be close. This is going to be very close. <laughs> 207, quick. Get down and exit the runway. Noel is in a DA-62. You need to go as fast as you can, Noel. Fast taxi. Firefly 426, inbound Gillog. At flight level 040. Firefly 426, Shannon Tower, Roger, continue approach. Call me back when established on the localizer. Call you back when established on localizer. Firefly 426. Firefly 207, vacate at Alpha. High speed taxi approved. Contact ground 121.8. Firefly 207, high speed taxi, vacate at Alpha. Oh, this is going to be close! Jesus. Firefly 202 Hello. wins. 010, two knots, runway 24, clear to land. <laughs> hey, Brun ATC, good to see you. Or Bun ATC, good to see you. Ah, no! 202, clear to land. Runway 24. Look how close that was. Jesus. Right, we're all right. We're back in the saddle again, Firefly lads. 207, vacated runway on Alpha. You're back in the wheel, 207. Contact Shannon Ground, 121.8. One Contact Shannon Ground, 121.8. One one <laughs> brilliant. Right. Ah, brilliant, lads. You had loads of room. What? Fireflies, 406, heading 90. On 3200. Firefly 406, Roger. Climb and maintain altitude 4000 feet and maintain heading 090 degrees. Keep heading that direction. I'll call you back in a few minutes. Okay, so 202 is clear to land. Firefly 408 established on ILS, runway 24. Firefly 408, Roger, you are number two. Continue approach. Expect a late landing clearance. Roger, Firefly 408. The 303, Colin. Firefly 303, established on ILS, runway 24. Who's in charge? You haven't a clue what you're doing. Firefly 303 wins 010 four knots. Runway 24, uh, clear to land. Uh, maintaining 90 and 44,000. Firefly 303 wins 0103 knots. Runway 24, clear to land. Clear to land, Firefly 303. Firefly 202, contact Shannon Ground 122. Correction. One two one decimal eight. Bye bye. Firefly three zero. Oh, Shannon Tower. Firefly three zero one. Uh, just passing Gillog for the ILS two four approach via Kuruto two Delta. That was Firefly three two one, wasn't it? Firefly three two one. Shannon Tower. Roger. Continue and call me back when established on the localizer. Hold on, that was true one. Firefly 426, crash to desktop. I'll try and get back to you later. Roger. Break, break. Firefly 301, uh, call me back when established on the localizer. I think he's already doing that. Firefly 301, Wilco. FFA 202, vacated runway 24 uh, at uh, taxiway alpha. Firefly 202, Roger, contact Shannon Ground, 121.8. Bye bye. Oh, this is going to be close. So we 408, hot in the tail. Oh, Jesus, yeah. That's a. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is going to be hilarious. Shannon Tower, Firefly 301, established on the localizer. Hmm. 
This is going to be very interesting. Firefly 301, continue approach. You are number three. What's going to happen here? Firefly 408, go around. Ooh. Firefly 408, going around. Now this is going to get interesting. Splint Tower, Firefly 206, flight level 65, overhead, Gilok, direct Dirok. Watch your space and lads. Firefly 206, Shannon Tower, hello. Continue approach, call me back on uh, when you're established on the localizer. Continue approach and we'll call Firefly 206. So we had a 414 Chancellor coming in, but then Shannon a 737 Tower, behind. Firefly 505. Uh, passing Georg, uh, direct to Shannon Runway, IS Runway 24, via the Kurum 2 Delta Departure, Firefly 505. Firefly 505, Shannon Tower, hello. Call me back when established on the localizer. This is going to get tight. <laughs> Call you back uh, when established on runway, when I'll pro on our approach, Firefly 505. What have you got him in? I don't think so. Well, bro, you need to go around. Firefly 408, go around. Firefly 408, going around. Up, you devil. What's that scene out of airplane? Someone like just cover your man in sweat or something. Jesus. Firefly 408. Climb to altitude 4,000 feet. Direct as gone. Then Gorto and call me back when established on the localizer for runway 24. Firefly 406. Maintaining 90 degrees. And still on 5100. Firefly 406, Roger. Maintain altitude 4000 feet. So at this stage, if ATC is giving you instructions like 4000 feet and you ramble up to 5000, we're going to give out to you. So, Shannon you know, Tower, Firefly 303, fill the gate gate, one way to four. Firefly 303, thank you. Welcome to Shannon. Contact ground 121 decimal 8. Bye bye. Ground 121 decimal 8. Thanks. Bye. Shannon Tower. Uh, Firefly 321. Overhead, Derek. Firefly 301. Wins. 320 at 3 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Do, 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 do. Clear to land, runway uh, 24, Firefly 321. Firefly 321, negative. That instruction was for Firefly 301. Break, break. Firefly 301, clear to land, runway 24. Firefly 301, clear to land, runway 24. Firefly 321, continue approach. You are number three. Are you established on the localizer? Firefly continue, number three. Uh, report established. Firefly 321. Firefly 206, uh, established on localizer, runway 16. Do, 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 do. Firefly 206, continue approach. You are number two. Continue approach, number two. Firefly 206. This is going to get awful, awful busy Shannon Tower, good evening. Firefly 007 with you at <laughs> Gillag at 6,000 feet inbound for ILS 24. Firefly 007 and also with you. Uh, call me when established at the localizer. <laughs> call you when established on localizer. Firefly 007. <laughs> Firefly 406. Turn left heading zero one zero.
Fire 5505, uh, Sun Tower Fire establish no final, runway 24. Firefly 505, go around. Fire 5505, going around. Remember, lads, you need to have the absolute distance between you figured out. If you're too close, like, you have to allow the aircraft to get down, landed, and vacated, yeah? But we're, we're going grand. <laughs> so far, so good. Let's see what we can do. Would I have gotten down? I don't think I would have gotten down. Because we have 206. He's in the C700, and then we have a 73. Oh, he's, he's, he's vacated somewhere he shouldn't have. Firefly 301, welcome to Shannon. Contact ground, one to one, decimal eight. Bye bye. Ground on one to one, decimal eight. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Firefly 206, winds 3203 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Runway to four, clear to land, Firefly 206. Firefly 406, turn left heading 010. Do, 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 do. Firefly 007. So that is what? An A320. Firefly 007 is established on the localizer runway 24. Okay, let's have a look here now. So there's. Grand. Firefly 007, continue approach. You are number two. Continue approach, number two. Firefly 007. Shannon Tower, good evening. Firefly 112, not with you. Over Gillog at 5,000 feet, inbound for the ILS runway 24. <laughs> Firefly 112, not with you. Uh, welcome. Continue approach and call me back when established on the localizer. Call you back when established, Firefly 112. Ah, brilliant. Right, how are we getting on now? 206 is about to make landfall. Then there's an A320 coming in behind him. How are we looking? We're, we're good, we're good. Dare I say it. <sighs> that, your man in the TBM, he's gone the wrong direction completely, God love him. Firefly 406, Shannon Tower, turn left, heading 010. Oh dear. 505, he's gone around. 408, he's gone around. 206, is he down? Yeah, he's down. Firefly 206, welcome to Shannon, vacate on Alpha. Contact Shannon Ground, 1 to 1, decimal 8. Bye bye. Backhead on Alpha, contact Shannon Ground, 1 to 1, decimal 8. Bye bye. Firefly 206. Firefly 321, winds 3203 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Firefly 321, clear to land. Fully established, ILS 24. Do, 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 do. Shannon Tower, Cessna 55006 at D Log, going to DRAG, requesting uh, ILS uh, arrival. Shannon, try, uh, try it again. It can happen. Don't worry. Uh, last aircraft calling. Have you a call sign? Let's start that again. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Tower, Cessna, Firefly, Firefly 006, uh, with information, Foxtrot. Gotcha. This is going to be interesting. Firefly 006, I will vector you. I want you to turn left, heading 160, maintain altitude 3,000 feet. Turn left for 160, maintain 3,000 feet. Firefly Air 006. Because he's going to get a little bit close to Dougal there. Now, did we get that other fellow down? 
Watch your own speed there, Muse. Uh, Firefly 007, uh, reduce speed to minimum approach speed. Slower down there! Reduce to minimum approach speed, Firefly 007. You're doing well, you'll, you'll get it, we get it. Uh, Gaza, it's good to see you. Is this training for Vatsim? Kinda. It's it's our way to learn what goes on, and it's the, high, the idea behind this is working on the communication. It's to build confidence so we can, you know, do more on Vatsim. You know what I mean? The whole idea here is to learn a little bit more. Right, Razor Cab is down. Man yourself. It looks like a good landing as well. Brilliant! Firefly321, welcome to Shannon. Vacate at Alpha. Contact ground on 1 to 1 decimal 8. Do, 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 do. Hello, Mr. Two Tone. Huh? 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 Oh. I don't know. Firefly 321, vacate alpha, contact ground, 1 to 1, decimal 8. Uh oh. Firefly 007 wins 320, 2 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Clear to land 24, Firefly 00. We lost Razor. Where did he go? He's still on. Oh, he's already gone to ground? Oh, Jesus. Don't jump to ground until the tower hands you to ground, if you know what I mean. Right, we'll release him. Uh, where's where's Muse Fan gone? Did I release Muse already? I did. I think I did. I Shannon think I did. Tower, Fireflyer 112, fully established on the ILS runway 24, 10 miles. Firefly 112, continue approach. You are number two. Expect late landing clearance. Continue approach number two, expect late clearance. Firefly 112. And Firefly 007, vacate at Alpha, contact Shannon Ground, 1 to 1 decimal 8. See ya. Vacate Alpha, and sorry, could you give me the frequency for Shannon Ground again, please? No, shag off, you're not getting it. Uh, ground frequency 1 to 1 decimal 8. 1 to 1 decimal 8, Firefly 007. Yep. All right, we're doing well, lads, we're doing well. Now, where's, where's these other lads? Firefly 006, turn left heading 010 degrees. Do, 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 do. Firefly 006, turn left heading 010 degrees. Firefly air turn left one zero one zero degrees. Zero one zero. Uh, zero one zero. Also, if you can, if you want, go direct DRAG and report when established on the localizer. Go direct to DRAG and report once established on the localizer. Firefly air zero zero six. Okay, that'll be a bit of crack here now. Double five 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 zero five. Uh, and, um, depart um, direct to Shannon via ILS 24 uh, via the um, direct, direct transition via Kurum 2 Delta transition. Right, lads, do we, know? Five, five, zero, five. do we know what happened? Firefly 505, Roger. Uh, I want you to go direct to Gorto, Waypoint Gorto. It's on our no times for the missed approach. So left turn direct Gorto. Uh, going to Gorto, Firefly 505, direct. Good stuff. Straight to Gorto. So that'll be a left turn, yeah? Vehicle's inbound. We're going to wait for 006. Then we'll probably get 408. Firefly 408. Uh, after the Cessna 172 at DRAG, report when established. Firefly 408 after the Cessna 172 and DRAG. I will report established. This is going to be interesting. Also, Firefly 408, reduce speed, minimum approach speed. 
reducing speed to minimum approach speed. There goes 505. He's all right. This is going to be mighty crack. <laughs> and Firefly 006, descend now, altitude 2,500 feet. Descend altitude 2,500 feet. Firefly Air 006. This will be fun. Uh, how are we getting on over here? 406. Yeah, he's kind of doing it now. Firefly 406. Uh, just checking in with you. I want you to maintain altitude of 4,000 feet. Six oh five five zero eight uh four zero one two two six two to six uh four two six right that looks to be the last batch of lads on the way these are all doing very very well by the way I'm very very proud of you lads you're doing great stuff so I give Dougal a landing clearance I did Firefly one one two less than one month <laughs> Firefly one one two wins three two zero one knot runway two four clear to land <laughs> Clear to land, Firefly 112. I didn't forget you. No, of course you didn't. <laughs> Jesus. Dougal's sitting there going, is this Murphy fella ever going to Shell clear me? Tower, Firefly 306 over Gillock, inbound 6,000, descending 3,000. 306 over Gillog. Firefly 306, roger. Um, continue approach, report when established on the localizer. Firefly 505, just approaching Gorto at 4,000 feet. Uh, the, um, uh, landing to ILS runway 24. Firefly 505, direct DRAG, report when established on the ILS. Uh, going direct to DRAG, uh, calling back when established on ILS. Oh, this uh, is shocking close. Five, five. This is going to be a mess. Firefly 208, uh, reduce speed now, 120 knots. Firefly 406, um, on uh, zero degrees, 4,000. Do, 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 do. Firefly 208, reduce speed to 120 knots. And yourself. This is going to be hilarious. Firefly 408 is reducing speed to 120 knots. 408? But well, that was 306. Can you do that? 737. Head on tower, Firefly 507, DBM 900, overhead Gillock at 4,000 feet, descending 3,000 feet for ILS approach runway 24. Firefly 507, roger. I'm going to vector you. Turn left heading zero two zero degrees. Maintain altitude four thousand feet. Turn left zero two zero degrees and maintain four thousand feet. Firefly five zero seven. Firefly one one two. Clear of the active on Alpha. Firefly one one two. Welcome to Shannon. Uh, contact Hello. Shannon Ground one to one decimal eight. Bye bye. One one two decimal eight. Firefly one one two. Right. Firefly Air 006 established on the uh, ILS. This is going to be tremendous crack. Firefly 006, continue approach. You are number one. Expect late landing clearance. Uh, Shannon Tower, can you repeat that? Firefly Air 006. 006, continue approach. You are number one. Expect late landing clearance. Firefly Air, clear for, uh, clear for la expect late landing clearance, five, five, Firefly Air 006. This is going to get fierce interest now in a second. I Firefly don't 408 is established on the ILS. Now where are you? You're at 3,000 feet. Oh, Jesus, now, lads, this is going to be great, crack. Hmm. He won't be able to do that. Let's see, can we get creative here for a minute? Shannon Tower, Firefly 306, established, localizer 324. Uh, this is going to be great fun. I don't think he's going to go around again, the poor devil. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Firefly 408, uh, go around. I will call you back, though. I'll get you back in quicker. So for the moment, go Mr. Proach. 
He's probably saying, I don't believe you. Firefly 408 going around. The poor devil, that's twice. I owe him at least one point to Guinness. Firefly 306, continue approach. You are number two. Number two, Firefly 306. What's he in? Oh, Jays is a 788. I oh, for God's sake, lads. <laughs> that 172. Jays, you're very high as well. This is going to be great crack altogether. That 172, you may break the old speed. Get it down there, right? Now, I need to vector other people. Jesus. 406, 507. Uh, 406, I'd love him. Right, let's have a look. He's only there. 408 is going to have to go around again. 505 is going to call us coming in. 507. Where's he going? He's on 020 degrees. That's grand. 406. Houston, we have a problem. For some reasons, my TBM90 always wants to turn right, so I'm countering that all the time. Who is that? Your TBM only wants to turn right. Here, so, as we can see, right, if 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 you can't kind of, if you can't get the aircraft doing what you need to do, you know what I mean. You need to know, like that's what we, the importance of knowing the aircraft. It's vital. Yeah. If you have a problem with the aircraft, you know, at that stage, you're probably as well to disconnect and, like, fix the problem. Do you know what I mean? Ah, I'm in a glass case of emotion! Yeah, this is getting all sorts of crazy now. So, far away is going around. Firefly. Pin and Tower, mm -hmm. Firefly 003, over Gilog. Rocks. Runway 24 for landing. Firefly 003. Call me back when fully established. Break, break. Uh, at him, 788. Firefly 306, go around. Dougal, have you been drinking? I going around, Firefly 306. I've been drinking like a mad idiot. Jesus, the little 172. How are we getting on? We're nearly there. You're doing brilliant. Right, lads, we'll get everyone in. Just wondering, Murph, should you not be giving us descent target when we come frequency, or is that up to us to sort out? 3,000 feet as per the star, Muse. So, once you're at, uh, the star will tell you at uh, DRAG to be at 3,000 feet. 5505, five, five, established on final. I got a throw me two, four. Mm -hmm. Why isn't 208 called me yet? This is interesting. 408, is he not going around? The 172, it's just like, get down in the ground quick, will you? <laughs> Jesus. 306 is going around, 408 is going around. Firefly 408, uh, turn right direct now to Gorto. Firefly 408, turning right direct to Gorto. Do, 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 do. Firefly 40X, 406, doing an emergency landing. Uh, Firefly 406, negative. You can just uh, disconnect there, mate. Firefly 505, that's the no final. Uh, 505, continue approach, minimum approach speed, please. Break, break, Firefly 006, winds 320 at 3 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Clear to land, 024, 506. Clear to land, runway 24, 555, Negative 505, you are not clear to land, continue approach. Can I do the refund? Two. Continuing approach, number 2, Firefly 505. Okay. 
Firefly Air, Firefly Air 006, uh, uh, clear to land, 2-4. We're getting there now. Hey, Barty, can you get a refund? The cat wants to come over and say hello. Phantom Tower of Firefly 003, establish on a localizer, runway 24. Square 5505 going around. Why are you going around? There's loads of room. Uh, Firefly 003, continue. Uh, you are number two. Shadow Tower, Firefly 507. Just a small question. You want me to continue heading uh, 020? Correct. I'll give you a shout back in about two minutes. Roger. He's probably saying I'm halfway to friggin' Dublin now. Don't worry, all will be revealed now. Why did he go around though? The old Cessna. Some challenge here now, isn't there? Jesus. So 306, he's heading out to Asgon. 408 is heading to Gorto, should be, but like. He's going in a mad direction. 006 will be touching down now in a second. 505 is going around. Or so he says. And then we have 208 right behind him. 406. It, God love him. He's a lost cause. Uh, 507. We'll give him a vector. Firefly 507. Turn left heading 270 degrees. Turn left heading two. 70 degrees, Firefly 507. Uh, no. <laughs> Should have made the slowdies come last. Listen, if we knew this, we didn't. Do you know what I mean? Do the lot of numbers while you're asking. Um, but you know what, lads? Isn't it great to see? Like, it, don't let this frustrate you. Isn't it interesting? When you see, like, a very small aircraft coming into the mix, that's... Uh, you can kind of see why you don't have 172s landing in like major international airports without all sorts of clearance. Do you know what I mean? It's interesting. Definitely interesting. Now the next snake of lads coming up the road. Keep your space and now boys, do you hear me? Keep 504. Watch your L space in there now lads. 508. Firefly Air 006, vacated 2-4. Firefly 006, welcome to Shannon. Good job. Contact Shannon Ground on 1-1 to one decimal 8. Contact one, uh, Shannon Ground 1-1 to one decimal 8. Thank you very much. Huzzah! Bye. Right, who else is coming in? 208. Firefly 208. Shannon Tower. 406. Firefly 406. Uh, Clito Land. Oh, Jesus. Where is 406? We have 208 and 003. Firefly 003. Winds 320 at 3 knots. Runway 24. Clear to land. Shannon Tower. Clear to five. Land. Clear to the end, uh, run between four, five, fly, zero, zero, three. Shannon Tower, Firefly, four, two, six, inbound, Gillog, descending, flight level, zero, four, zero. Your spacing is not good, lads. Your spacing is not good. Firefly 426, Roger, I'm going to vector you. Turn right heading 090 degrees. Maintain altitude 6,000 feet. Firefly 605, inbound to Shannon on the Kuro 2 Delta arrival, descending to 3,000 feet. Firefly 426. Turn right heading 090, uh, climbing back to 6,000 feet. Firefly 605, Roger, call me when fully established on the localizer. Hello there. We'll uh, call back when on the localizer. Firefly 605. Firefly 507, 
Turn left heading one nine or zero. Left one nine or zero, Firefly five zero seven. Firefly four zero eight is over Gorto flight uh, at three thousand feet. Firefly four zero six uh, has runway in sight on eight hundred eighty. Firefly two zero eight. I, I had a problem. Not disconnect. Two zero eight. Roger. Break, break. Firefly 408, direct DGAN, call me when established. Negative. Correction. Firefly 408, direct DGAN. Jesus, lads, worse under pressure. What's that 406 doing? Jesus. We'll get this back now in a second. <laughs> Firefly 408, say again. Firefly 408, uh, direct DGAN. Can you see the DGAN waypoint? Probably not. Uh, Firefly 408, disavow. Just give me a call when established on the localizer. I will go. Firefly 408. Okay, is that? Firefly 003, vacated runway 24 at Alpha. Firefly 003, contact Shannon Ground, 1 to 1 decimal 8, bye bye. Break, break. Firefly 208, winds 3203 knots, runway 24, clear land. Bad lads. Rambog, will you do an hour Firefly 408, clear to land, runway 24. Firefly 408. Where's 208? Oh wait, the 208 disconnect. Is that what he said? Balls. Right. 504. Do, 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 do. Firefly 605 is uh, on the localizer. Firefly 605, Roger, continue approach. You are number three. Expect late Firefly land clearance. Firefly 406, clear to land. Please repeat. Firefly 40. Sorry, negative. Firefly 605, uh, continue approach. You are number three. Expect late landing clearance. Expect late landing clearance. Firefly 605. Firefly 504, Shannon Tower. How do I disappear the guys that I don't have? Isn't it right to do that? Uh, 208. What's the story with 504, lads? Five zero four. Firefly five zero four, Shannon Tower. You need to listen to your calls, lads. Five zero four. Who be that? Shannon Tower, Firefly 426, continuing uh, direction 090, just checking that's correct. Firefly 426. Firefly 426, roger. Uh, I'll call you back in two minutes. Firefly 504, Shannon Tower. It's hard to control you lads if you ain't listening. <laughs> Jesus. Firefly 401 wins 3203 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Is my mic even working? Should be. Firefly 
Firefly 401. It's all going against us, lads. Who's in charge? You haven't a clue what you're doing. It's all broken. You aren't listening. Jesus. Who is... Who's 401? Are, like, people just disconnecting or what's happening, lads? The bane of my very existence, Panther. <laughs> Right, let's have a look. Right, 401 can't get on the blower at all. I wonder, has he disconnected? Firefly 401, Shannon Tower? No? Firefly... Who be this? Firefly 408 established on ILS. Firefly 408, Roger, continue approach. You are Firefly number three. Firefly 406, vacating the runway. Good luck to you. Firefly 605 is on the ILS. Firefly 426, left heading 010 degrees. Firefly 426, 010 degrees. Okay, so who have we got left? 401. Firefly 508, inbound DRAG, descending to altitude 3000. Firefly 508, Shannon Tower, Roger, contact me when fully established. Four zero one. I wonder did he disconnect? I think he did. All right, four zero one. Don't need to worry about him. Uh, five zero five. You gone. Six zero five. Firefly six zero five wins three two zero three knots runway two four clear to land. Firefly six zero five clear to land. Thank you. This is shocking close. Far away again. Dude, your speed, man. How did he get in so close? Lads, you just need to watch your space. That's just not going to happen. So that's what, a DA-72 and a 737? That was never going to work. Right, that was sterling. Let's see, can we get very productive here now? Oh. <gasps> There's no way we're going to get him down and out. Although technically he is ahead of him. Firefly 402. Runway 24 clear to land. Do we even have 408? Firefly 408 Shannon Tower. Firefly 408. Uh, winds 3203 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Clear to land, Firefly 408. Firefly 605, I'm going to see, can I get you in behind that 737? Reduce speed to minimum approach speed, please. Do, 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 do. Firefly 605, Shannon Tower. Is that Sean you're Firefly talking to? 605, please repeat. Uh, 605, going to try and get you in behind the 737 ahead of you. Reduce your speed to minimum approach speed. Reducing the minimum approach speed. He just blew past me, so I think we've got plenty of room. Yeah, it was the third go around, God love him. But sure, listen, we'll get this in. <laughs> no worries, it's all good. Firefly 605. Poor El Balbro. Jesus, I must have sent him across the country twice, huh? Right, we're getting there. She's coming back on track, lads. Oh, right, he's about to do. 605 is about to do. How are we getting on over here now? 010426. Firefly 426, Shannon Tower. Firefly 426. Turn left heading 250 degrees. Descend altitude 5,000 feet. 250 degrees. 
Uh, repeat altitude, Firefly 426. Uh, altitude, 5,000 feet. 5,000 feet for Firefly 426. Do, 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 do. How are we looking up here now? Firefly 507, turn left heading 040 degrees. Left uh, 040 degrees, Firefly 507. It's all happening now, lads. Firefly 605 is on short final. Looks like the runway is clear. You want me to land this thing? Firefly 605, runway 24, clear to land. Firefly 4. Firefly 408, vacated runway at Alpha. Firefly 408, thank you. Contact Shannon Ground, 121 decimal 8. Bye bye. We'll get there now. Tower lads. Firefly 306, we establish iOS 1824. That's Firefly 306. Firefly 306, Roger. Continue approach, expect late landing clearance. Firefly 306. Right, so 208 is gone. 505, uh, uh, passing direct, uh, at, um, direct to runway ILS 24, 55505. Right, so he put himself into a missed approach, and it's the same is going to happen now again, because it's just getting all sorts of crack. Now, 508 is in a vision jet, and this guy's in an A320. Is going to be interesting. Five five four zero eight switching to ground. Four zero eight. Uh, that's okay. Five five, five zero five. Uh, We've no control no. Landing departure runway two four. Firefly five zero five. You're a little bit too close to me there. Firefly 505, continue approach. You are number three. Reduce speed, minimum approach. Reduce speed, minimum approach, number three. Firefly 505. This will get interesting. 605. 605 is done. Firefly 605, welcome to Shannon. Contact ground, one to one decimal eight. Contact and ground. Thanks for your services. Firefly 306 wins 320 with three knots. Runway 24. Clear to land. Clear to land 324. Fly by 306. Tower, Firefly 508. Established on the look laser. Runway 24. Firefly 508. Continue approach. You are number two. Shannon Tower, Firefly 508, continue approach. Firefly 505, go around. Firefly 505, going around. And Firefly 505, go direct Gorto. Call me from there, please. Uh, going, or, going direct Gorto, Firefly 505. Firefly 507, left turn, direct DRAG. Call me when established on the localizer. Turn left, direct DREC, and call you when established on the localizer. Firefly 507. Firefly 426, make straight in to DRAG. Call me when established on the localizer. Firefly 426, make straight in DRAG, and I'll call you when established. Firefly 426. Right, so who am I saying? 406, 401. Uh, we're getting close now. He's gone. He's in. 208, he's gone. Dead in the water. Uh, 306 is inbound. 406, uh, looked yet. Right, we're nearly there, lads. Jeez. Uh, Triple L, good to see you. Welcome in. I tell you what, I'd, I'd, I'd be roaring to sleep tonight, lads. <laughs> Where's 504 going?
Firefly 504, Shannon Tower. Firefly 504, Shannon Tower. Do, 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 do. Ah, be the chase. Did he miss Alpha? That's a big 10 for good buddy. No, he didn't. He's okay. All is well in the realm. Five. Who are you? Five or three? Firefly 306. Welcome to Shannon. Contact ground. One to one decimal eight. Bye bye. One to one decimal eight. Firefly 306. Good night. Cool. Firefly 508 wins 320 at three knots. Runway 24. Clear to land. Hey, Balthorian, good to see you. Have you came Clear to land, in. runway 24, Firefly 508. Good job. Right, we're getting there now. How's the mess up here that I left? Jesus. 505. Okay, 504, I think I've lost. Firefly 504, Shannon Tower. Did we lose someone? I think we lost to someone. 507 is looking good. 426 is looking good. Who's left coming up the hill? Not many. So Firefly 208, he's he disconnected, right? So he's gone. I need a button to disappear these. Uh, 508 is good. 505 is going direct Gorto. 504, I've lost. Uh, I've said rogue aircraft. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out push to talk. Sean Duff. What's your call sign, Sean? Because I can vector you in from here. Don't worry, man. Morph Recycle Multiplayer. I have. Diddly diddly do. Diddly diddly do. Right, give it a second. Anyone in need of uh, aerial refueling? Oh, we're going all right now, I think. 426 is inbound. Uh, and Shannon Tower, uh, Firefly 507, <laughs> established localizer, runway 24. Firefly 507, continue approach. Uh, expect late landing clearance. Continue approach and expect late landing clearance. Uh, Firefly 507. So it takes a little while for everything to get updated, do you know what I mean? Uh, Mark Brian, thank you very much indeed. Welcome aboard. Cheers, man. Uh, I'm taking a Discovery flight in a Piper Archer tomorrow. Nice, Bathorian. They're really nice. Um, right, how are we getting on here now? So Firefly 508 should be in. And Firefly 508, vacate on Alpha. Contact ground, one to one, decimal eight. Bye-bye. Firefly 508. Hello there. Is this Vatsim? Kinda. Firefly 401. Where are you? Was I talking to 401 already? I don't see it on my scope. 505, 508, 507, 426. We had someone earlier on. That's okay. Firefly 508. Did you just jump and go? Firefly 508. <laughs> My flight sim has paused. That's quite okay. Uh, if it comes back to life, over to ground on 122.8. Uh, nice landing. Okay. Release him. Firefly 507 wins 330 at 4 knots, runway 24, cleared to land. A runway 24, cleared to land, Firefly 507. Firefly 505, 
Uh, what's your current airspeed? Five 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 zero five. Say again, please. Uh, what is your current airspeed? Reduce airspeed. Five 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 zero five. Firefly Firefly five zero five. Say again. What is your current airspeed? Uh, my airspeed is uh, one fifty. Five five zero five. One fifty knot. Fire five five zero five. Thank you. Five zero five. Uh, reduce speed one four zero knots if able. Reduce speed one four zero. Right, five oh seven is inbound. Four two six is going to get established now in a second. Five oh five. We need to space it behind four oh six. We should be all right because they're a three twenties. Anyone else in the vicinity? Who's this? I don't know who that is. You're nearly all in. Jesus, Buzz. Uh, Shannon Tower, Firefly 426, established on the localizer. Firefly 426, continue approach. You are number two. Expect late landing clearance. Firefly 426, number two. Expect late landing clearance. Firefly 426. The main thing is need to know here, lads. Fire five five zero five inbound to the reg, uh, direct to Shannon ILS runway two four via. Um, Just read. Man, man. You'd want to read the L script. Correction. <laughs> and Firefly five zero five Roger, call me back when fully established on the ILS. Call you back when fully established on final five 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 zero five. Okay, we're doing all right now, lads. There's Mickey Ozzy inbound. And Mickey up the yard. There's David Bay, Larger Life. These are doing very well. And that's that's the important thing here. Don't worry too much about the phraseology if you get it wrong. Don't panic if you make a mistake. The biggest thing I have to say to you, if you don't know how to operate your aircraft. You know, oh, the plane is doing this and I can't figure it out. You need to spend more time practicing with that aircraft. But there's, there's no other way to explain it. There's no magical fix. Um, if you jump onto VATSIM, it's possible that the aircraft is has a bug or your controls have made a mistake. But as the pilot, your responsibility is to make sure you've done your, your pre-flight checks. You test things like the autopilot. You test, you know, you just test everything. Do you know what I mean? And if something happens, it happens. Um, but it's all about practice. Don't let anything tonight throw you off. This is all about practice. If you get time during the week, repeat this flight, call out, follow the script, and don't worry too much about getting it word for word, because I can hear some people getting tripped up. They're trying to say everything they feel or they think they need to. Don't worry about that. Who are you? Where are you? And what do you want? Keep it as basic as you can, just until you get a little bit comfortable with how you speak to it. Do you know what I mean? But by and large, lads, I mean, you're doing an absolutely incredible thing. And considering we don't have approach online, the next time when we do this, we will have approach online, meaning approach will be doing way more in terms of vectoring and getting your speeds right. This is very kind of last minute dot com horsing you into, you know, oh, quick, do this, or quick, do that. So, you know what I mean? These are doing brilliant. You really, really are. Firefly 507, welcome to Shannon. Contact ground on 121.8. Ground on 121.8. Thank you very much for the ATC. Firefly 507. And Firefly 426 wins 330 at 4 knots, runway 24, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 24, Firefly 426. Sweet. Uh, Rambog, thanks a million. I'm logging off. He's going to <laughs> roar yourself to sleep, Rambog Mord. Have a great night, mate. We'll catch you. Drummer, good to see you. Yeah, it's it's nuts, lads, but like, as I said, it's it's a matter of... It's a matter of practice. That's all it is. You know, I'm not a controller, so like I'm f f fired into the deep end here. 
I'm sure, listen, it'll be grand. <laughs> Do you know? We'll see what happens. Who's this devil now? Jesus, we don't know who that is. Away with you. So we 4 to 6 inbound, and we have 5 or 5 inbound, and then we've other guys just in the vicinity. That's okay. Wait, where's the button? Grover Zorus. Or Grover Zorus is one of them. David Bay and Larger Life. Is it doing well? It's doing very well. Uh, and G players, yeah. They're order. 5 times 0 5. Fully established no final. Request to land runway 2 4. Says he, please get me down. Firefly 505, Roger, you are number two. Expect late landing clearance. We need to get the other Expect guy down first. Late landing clearance. Firefly 505. Uh, Shirley Dev, I'm on the Southeast Asia. I am indeed. I am indeed. No, you're grand, Shirley Dev. Don't jump server. You're fine. It's just I can see on the scope. That's all. Now, this is better. A pair of A320s. So David Bay needs to get down and then Larger Life needs to make sure there's sufficient space there. Um, but yeah, like, if anything, lads, what I hope this lesson has shown you, if, if more than anything, you can now see that if you're flying into a control zone with only tower online, just look at what tower has to deal with. Do you know what I mean? You can absolutely see, like, Jesus, it gets busy and... If you have slow aircraft and fast moving aircraft, this is all about putting bits of the jigsaw together. You can now see this. So as a pilot, when you're flying on the network and you only see tower, be super critical and be super aware of your spacing with other aircraft. That's It's vital. Do you know what I mean? You'll see it because otherwise what could happen, you'll just get go arounds all night long. So you need to be aware of that. And this will absolutely stand to you in later lessons. You know what I mean? But yeah, all will be well. So David Bay inbound, looking good. Larger Life inbound, looking good. And then Gibbo is doing a stellar job taxiing everyone to their position. And it seems to be going very, very well. David Bay, look at the state of that for a landing. Beautiful. Uh, let me see, Shannon Tower. No, we're still okay. Uh, right. And Firefly 426, welcome to Shannon. Vacate Alpha. Contact ground, 1 to 1 decimal 8. Did he jump out before I got to say it to him? No, he's still there. Uh, Firefly 426, Shannon Tower. Firefly 426, sorry, I overshot Alpha. Oh, this is going to make a great crack. Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, oh, what's he doing? A pause. Ah. 505 at 1000, one request landing. Runway 24. Oh, this is. Ah, lads, there's always. This. Firefly 426, can you about turn and slip off there quick as you can? Do we, Yui? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Don't go on the grass now. Yeah, you'll make it. It'll be grand. Larger life is coming in hot. Shannon Tower, Firefly 426, grass cutting and vacating <laughs> runway. Firefly 426, thank you for your help. Contact ground, 121.8. One 121.8, one one Firefly 426. Firefly 505 wins 3304 knots, runway 24, cleared to land. Cleared to landing, uh, runway 245505. Not a second too soon, right? <laughs> Jesus. It was at this moment he realised he was never going to make it as an air traffic controller. <laughs> At Firefly Air, Sterling, it needs to be one. At Firefly Air, we laugh. <laughs> laugh at runway excursions. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, Larger Life is in. Jesus, that was some crack, wasn't it? How are we getting on now? Right, I think we're, I think we're okay, lads. I think we're okay. And Firefly 505, welcome to Shannon. Vacate on Alpha. Contact ground, one-to-one, one, decimal eight. See ya. 
The new IE lawnmowers are fabulous, right? Fire 5505, wicked off, Alpha. Fire 5505. Sweet! Right, now, as we kind of wrap this one up, first off, lads, well done. Well done to everyone. That that can't be easy. And, like, I had to throw in a bit of... I had to do all sorts of crazy, and, like, I didn't probably help. A uh, couple of things popped up on our system just with... Um, aircraft not updating maybe right but by and large we're actually getting everyone from cork up to shannon just to give us an idea of what we were doing and you've all done very very well indeed uh, when we have approach online you'll see the difference that an approach controller can make to five, this five, five, zero five. Uh, wicked wicked Robbie, wicked request taxi to parking firefly 505 contact Shannon Ground on 121 decimal 8. Bye bye. Contact Shannon Ground on 121 decimal 8. Fire 55505. Five, five, bye bye. Well, like, you get the idea, right? It's You'll see what the approach controller will be able to do. Hello there. And then when we're not able to fly with approach and you're flying yourself on Vatsim and there's only tower, now you, you, you have a taste of what tower have to deal with. Do you know what I mean? So the whole point was. Oh, yeah, that's what goes on on the far side. Do you know? But anyway, cold shower now. Roar myself to sleep. You know how it is. But I want to thank everyone so, so very much indeed um, for, for flying along. You, you've done incredible stuff once again. Uh, and bar one or two, uh, and, and even at that, that would be critical. Like, everyone has done such an amazing job tonight. Is there stuff to learn? For sure. A lot of you guys nailed it. I have stuff to learn. Um, but by and large, you've, you've done an incredible job here, lads. So next week, what's going to happen? We're going to be giving you a full demonstration flight. Myself and Gibbo are going to do a shared cockpit flight on the VATSIM network. And we're going to be flying from Dublin to Shannon. Uh, and it's a full step-by-step -step of what we're doing. But the point of our lessons next week, we want to show you two things. One, flying on VATSIM. But two, being able to operate in a shared cockpit environment, meaning that you can now buddy up with your friends or whatever to start training a little bit more. One person looks after the flying, one person looks after the communication and vice versa. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, do you know? So uh, we'll jump into ground here. I think they're all clear now. Uh, they're getting their taxiway instructions. Uh, Shannon Ground, Firefly 235. Firefly 235, Shannon Graham, pass your message. Asher, how are you now? Um, What's the crack? Well done, man. Well, listen, well done to you. You're under pressure. <laughs> I had my feet up here. I was having a few Guinness. It was great. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed them. I feel like your man out of airplane sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Now, nah, well done. Fair play to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, poor Bell, bro, though. What did you do to poor Bell, bro? I can't remember. Was it, I mean? was it three or four go rounds? I can't remember. It was a lot. Of strife. <laughs> I think he's still up there. Like <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But come here. Enough. I made four go arounds. Four go arounds. Oh, Jesus. Oh, dear. We'll, we'll, we'll put that into the um, <clears throat> onto the onto the list. Legend has it he's still holding it as gone. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and one here. of them is my fault. It's grand, it's grand. Come here, how many did we have tonight? We had 20 odd, I think, did we? Yeah, I have, I have it on my, my one sheet of paper here that I can barely make sense of anymore. Uh, yeah, it was well over 20. Over 20 people flying. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Some crack. Yeah, really, really good. Everybody did again, really great job. And and it's building each and every week. I mean, we did the reverse of this last week where we took off from controlled into uncontrolled mm -hmm. and now flipping it here. It's it's really building week on week, each step of the way. So um, everybody did phenomenal again. Yeah, I can echo that. And like, even like, you know, the spacing as well. Like it's, it's and because that's hard to do, even on VATSIM. When you're on Unicom to get that spacing right, just to be aware of other aircraft, like VATSIM controllers struggle with that today. So to see our guys doing it the way he's did, just awesome stuff, lads. Awesome, awesome stuff. So uh, well done. Brilliant. So as I said, next week is going to be a hoot. <laughs> and uh, me and Gibbo get to do uh, what will we fly, Gibbo? Well, first of all, I'm captain. Okay, <laughs> let's just get that straight. Right, right. right. I'll be your first <laughs> officer. Wait, didn't Christy Moore have a song about? No, no, wait, no. I'll be <laughs> your. Yeah, no. What was that? I'll be your captain, and you're my first mate. I don't know what it is. 
Which I listen, I <laughs> will I do the radio so will I? The Voyage. The Voyage, Muse, that's the one, yeah. Jesus. That's stuck in my head there now. Christy Moore, The Voyage, you know what it's all about. That'll be me and Gibbo next week. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, listen, uh, uh, lads, thank you all so very much indeed for taking part. And uh, we had some new people join us tonight. Uh, they have been noted. They've done absolutely incredible. And uh, very, very happy moment to uh, to get so many people uh, online with us. It's, it's, it, it is awesome. Uh, so next week, uh, we'll have even more. So to all our ATC pilots uh, on the voice channels here, thank you all so very much, guys. We'll catch you soon. And uh, we'll disconnect from here. And then everyone else here this evening. Thank you so very much. We ran late, but sure, listen, I mean, what did you expect? It's me. Uh, but thank you all so very, very much indeed. And a uh, huge shout out to Gibbo and to Rambog for all the help and uh, for everyone for taking part. And we shall see you again on the ATC course next Monday. Uh, for the rest of the week, our normal schedule continues. Uh, for those of you interested in getting a look at the India Fox Echo Tornado, well, do be sure to tune in on Wednesday night. We're going to be checking out the Tornado live on stream. And then on Friday night, well, we have a Warbird Air Show thingamajig. Warbirds over Wanaka, a group flight in New Zealand coming up on Friday. Uh, keep yourself up to date over on Discord. Uh, exclamation point discord to bring a, a link to our discord channel so until next week as i bash my hand thank you all so very much i am off to shout at the goats now and uh, we'll see you soon take care fancy pedals fancy pedals uh -oh. Uh -oh. no no uh -oh. no no this is Daddy. listen listen it's a butter. hurricane it's a hurricane oh power yeah. off Bit of, bit of right rudder. Uh, bleed that speed. Bleed that speed. Oh, look at that. I got a break. Break now. Break. 